The sun is shining in the blue sky. A voice offers to experience a second life for real. A girl with long brown hair and underwear says she is sweating profusely from the heat. The voice talks about a game called Nine Heavens that can give real sensations. A huge horned monster with an open mouth attacks the heroes. The voice says that the game gives complete freedom of action with the ability to kill, fly, and more. A man with a red cloak flies down on a blue horned dragon. A voice tells you about business opportunities and that you can marry a rich and beautiful girl. In the game, you can get rich overnight. An embracing guy with a cigarette in his teeth and a girl in a blue dress are driving a car. Three presenters in business suits with helmets in their hands tell us that the most amazing thing is the latest game helmet that restores nerves and changes the shape of the body. A guy with dark brown hair is reading a brochure. He is in a wheelchair. Three men in business suits announce that the Tian Xing group is opening the door to a new world. The protagonist with a sad face remembers that everything was turned upside down when the game Nine Heavens appeared. His gaze becomes determined. He hopes that the advertisement of the game is true. The guy's name is Lu Chen and he lives with his younger sister. He was previously an office worker with a good salary and future. Lu Chen is adjusting his tie, with his younger sister standing behind him. One day, a life-changing incident happened to the protagonist. The guy was attacked by two hooligans, one of whom hit him in the back of the head with a bat while the other was lying on the ground. Lu Chen had to spend all his savings and possessions to save his life. He turned into a vegetable who could only move his head and one arm. The guy is lying in bed with his head bandaged, with his younger sister and a doctor standing in the background by the door. The protagonist thinks that he has become a burden to his sister and a non-entity to the others. Two women are whispering to each other. One of them is grey-haired, the other has brown hair. The grey-haired woman says that Lao Lu is an angel in the flesh, feeding Lu Chen. The other woman agrees and replies that sisters don't usually care like that. Away from the women, Lao Lu is carrying his brother in a wheelchair. The grey-haired woman feels sorry that this worthless brother will drag his sister down for the rest of her life. The younger sister calls her brother by name as he sits on the wheelchair with a sad face. Lu Chen does not want to be a burden. A voice from the TV announces the launch of the Nine Heavens game based on quantum entanglement, which could change the future fate of mankind. The man from the TV holds a helmet above him for the game while the protagonist sits in the room. The launch of the game was announced just as Lu Chen was about to take his own life in order to free both himself and his sister. The protagonist thinks about the fact that there are many rumors about Nine Heavens. It is said that the players of the game have undergone huge changes and someone has even become superhuman. One of the closed beta players, a muscular man in grey pants, smashes a rock with his fist. Lu Chen is most interested in allowing players with leg paralysis and other disabilities to become ordinary people. A man in a shirt who just got up from a wheelchair, rejoicing that he no longer needs to use it, is another player from the closed beta. The protagonist questions whether the game is really that magical. A loop with a window in the background, with sunlight reflecting on it. Lu Chen gave up suicidal thoughts and dedicated his future to the Nine Heavens, a beautiful development that is illuminated by the sunlight. The guy looks at his phone in surprise when he receives a message from Lao Lu. She asks him to start without her because of overtime at work. Lu Chen doesn't have money for a gaming helmet so he had to buy a used one. He hopes there won't be any problems with it. The main character in a wheelchair bends over to the box and pulls out a game helmet. So, nine heavens, don't let me down, he thought as he pulled out his helmet. Lu Chen put on the helmet, and then the LEDs on it began to glow brightly. A multitude of blue pixels form an image. A girl with purple hair tied in a ponytail and wearing tight clothes with LEDs appears. She greets the protagonist. A blue authorization window appears in front of the guy and the girl appears behind him. She asks him to enter his ID. Lu Chen points his index finger at the authorization window. He types in Du Quan's ID. The girl welcomes the protagonist to the first level, Heaven of Mortals. She says that this game is free and there are surprises everywhere. The pixels form a forest landscape with a river in the middle and mountains in the background. Lu Chen is surprised by his new character. He looks at his hands, which have become like wolf paws. The protagonist wonders why he didn't hear about this on the news, since usually in games, they choose the character's appearance and clothing first. On the wolf's face, Lu Chen traces a look of worry. He realized that his hands were wolf paws and that he had turned into a monster rather than becoming a swordsman, puppeteer, or archer. The protagonist looks at his hands with his mouth open. In the background, monsters like him are looking around. Lu Chen wonders if this wolf can be pumped up and how to make money playing as him. He grabbed his head with his paws and shouted a command that opened the profile. 
a blue window with the character's characteristics appeared in front of him. Lu Chen was worried about the fact that he had indeed turned into a werewolf. The werewolf covered his face with his hand. He thinks about how weak his attributes are. They are reduced by 20, and the chance of a critical hit roll is 1%. The protagonist didn't even realize he could move. He has a look of surprise on his face. Lu Chen notices that the game body feels like his own. He squeezes his bicep and places his hand on it. The protagonist laughs happily as he realizes that he can run. The werewolf runs off into the distance on all fours. Lu Chen climbs up on a rock and howls. A person shouts that there is a werewolf here and calls out to other people. She points her finger at the protagonist. A girl with short dark hair calls the werewolf weak and ugly, while another girl with short brown hair suggests killing it, reasoning that it's not easy to take critical damage from such ugly things. Five newbie girls walk towards the protagonist. Among them are a girl with blonde hair tied up in a ponytail, a girl with blue hair, a girl with short black hair, a girl with long dark hair, and a girl with short brown hair. The werewolf doesn't understand what it is that makes it harder to take critical damage. There is a look of bewilderment on his face. However, he notices that even their rookie outfit looks cool, and that this game isn't that bad. The girl with blue hair yells that she doesn't know if the werewolf will drop his club, but it's worth 300 coins. The three girls run at the werewolf. The girl with long dark hair replies that this is the market price and they won't make much from selling the club. Lu Chen thinks about how expensive the cudgel is. He wishes he could sell it right now. A girl with long dark hair jumps on the werewolf. She screams about the damage being too high. The protagonist deals three units of damage to her with a bludgeoning blow. The girl with the short dark hair asks the others to hurry up. The blue-haired girl replies that they have come to help. Immediately four girls attack Lu Chen and he steps back. One of them says she doesn't believe they can't kill him with the five of them, and the other agrees. The protagonist thinks to himself that this can't go on and that the other werewolves will attack the players. A drop of sweat runs down his face. Other werewolves come out from behind the vegetation. The girls step back. One of them yells about how insidious it is that the protagonist has attracted other monsters. The other screams that there are more than ten werewolves. The girls are surrounded by monsters. One of them asks, what should we do? The werewolves attack the girls. Lu Chen thinks the time is right. He stands among the angry werewolves, preparing to attack. The protagonist attacks a long-haired girl in the back with a club. She disappears and in-game items fall from her. A blue window appears announcing that the player has died and that he has gained 10 experience points and one level of monster reputation. Lu Chen realizes that killing players gives unexpected rewards. He smiles happily and thinks about killing more players. Quickly moving from one target to another, he kills players. Lu Chen thinks about where to buy blood replenishing potions. He picks up the vials from the floor and assumes it's at the reputation store. A blue window appears with information about an entry-level health potion. The protagonist finds no such potions in the store and assumes that werewolves cannot buy such potions. He browses the store's assortment with a keen eye and discovers an opportunity to improve talents and qualities. Lu Chen remembers that the official website said that players don't have talents before choosing a career but he does. He thinks about the fact that he can improve his talents and that he has more damage than other players. The light of the blue store window falls on Lu Chen's face. The protagonist assumes that he can kill other monsters. He decides to test this ability on the nearest werewolf, throwing a gloating glare at it. Lu Chen realizes the possibility, attacking his fellow werewolf with a jumping kick to the head. He runs after the other werewolves, swinging his club. The protagonist apologizes to the werewolf lying under his foot and drinks a potion. He then attacks this werewolf with a club and soon a blue window appears with information about the experience and enhancement shards being gained. Lu Chen is excited about the improvement shards that can be exchanged. He is going to become rich. The protagonist attacks other werewolves, wondering what he is waiting for. Fifteen minutes pass. His qualities have improved. Not only has his character changed, but also his physical body. The werewolf puts his hand on his biceps with a joyful face. The blue window shows Lu Chen's characteristics he thinks it's cool to be a werewolf. He looks at his arm with happy eyes. The protagonist is thinking about how realistic this game is. Someone screams, asking for help. The werewolf turns toward the scream. Lu Chen doesn't realize what's going on, looking surprised at the source of the noise. A man with a bare torso is talking about a rumor that hitting players without equipment destroys clothing and he didn't think it was true. Behind him stand two other bullies. The offended girl covers her stomach with her hands and asks them what they're doing, saying this is over the top. 
A girl with brown hair gathered into a ponytail tells Ling Jai that she's back from the newcomer village and will take her out by force if she doesn't quit. Ling Jai is sitting in a chair with a helmet on her head. She says she can't be taken out because she will be given a ban and won't be able to log into the game for three hours. Lin Jai has signed a contract with Nine Heavens Marketing and will be promoting the game after a while. A girl with brown hair is asking what she should do. The man, holding a club in his hand, says that Lin Jai is good and that he has heard that real-life appearances can be used in the game. He assumes that she did. Lin Jai, with the club in two hands, looks at the man fearfully. Lu Chen abruptly pushes himself off the ground with his foot. With one blow to the head, he knocks out the man with his bare torso. The protagonist scoffs at the fact that the three men are acting like bullies in this game and says that they are boring. The main character jumps on the main bully. The man with the bare torso holds the spot where the blow was struck with his hand. He wasn't expecting to see a werewolf. The bully with short black hair yells for the others to attack. The werewolf immediately punches him right in the left cheek, causing him to lose his balance. The falling bully claims that it's not a weak werewolf, but a regular werewolf, because its damage is too high. He asks for help from the other bullies. Lu Chen says that it was easy to handle three players when he has recovery potions. While flying, the protagonist drinks a vial of healing potion. In a dance of battle, he defeats all three bullies. The werewolf feels sorry that one person only has one vial of the potion. The protagonist picks up another vial of potion while leaning over the defeated enemies. Lin Jai seems impossible to have a wild beast helping her. She looks at him with bewilderment. The girl asks if he needs these potions and offers him her own. Lu Chen thought of the girl thanking him even though he was just about to kill her. He thanks her and takes the potions. Lin Jai is surprised that the werewolf can talk. A blue window appears in front of the girl's face with a message asking her if she's okay and that the advertising campaign will start soon. Lu Chen walks off into the distance and the girl talks about starting preparations for the ad campaign. The protagonist thought about the fact that people can be found everywhere and that this place is near the newcomer's village. But if you attract attention too much, you might get into a fight. Standing on all fours, he pushed himself off the ground and added that it was better to stay away from people and fight monsters. Lu Chen finds a place near the other werewolves. He opens the in-game menu. The protagonist thinks that this place must be safe. He realizes that he doesn't know what the other players are doing because he has been a monster since he logged in. Lu Chen decides to watch the official promo video. In the promo, Lin Jai as the host says that when the server launched, 80,000 people ran to the newbie village to fight monsters. She adds that the number of players is n times the number of monsters and that it will be difficult to level up. Lu Chen notices that the presenter in the video is the same girl he just saw. He didn't realize that she had so much experience. He also adds that there are so many players in the game. The protagonist thought it was cool to be a werewolf and that he should kill them. He glances at the two werewolves behind him. One werewolf is defeated and the protagonist receives 10 aura points, one level 0 talent evolution shard, and one level 0 trade evolution shard. The second werewolf is defeated with a swift kick, and Lu Chen is also rewarded for it. One by one, the enemies explode around the protagonist from his attacks. The protagonist sits on a mountain of defeated werewolves and thinks about the fact that he needs to collect 10 level 0 talent evolution shards to improve. A blue notification window flashed in front of the protagonist. It read, DYN Dawn. The talent has been upgraded to level 0 lower werewolf bloodline. Normal attacks can inflict critical hit, 64 probability of double critical hits. Lu Chen thinks about the fact that a 6% probability critical hit isn't that bad. He clenches his fist. The protagonist adds that he needs 10 one-level talent evolution shards, but he only gets level 0 shards. He decides to click on a level 0 evolution shard and see what happens. A notification appears in front of him saying that a level 0 talent evolution shard can be sold for 0.1 monster reputation. In addition to the sale, you can synthesize 10 level 0 shards into one level 1 shard. This was what caught Lu Chen's attention. He thought about the fact that he needed to look for high-level monsters to sway. Then he could get a level 1 evolution shard. Lu Chen intends to kill the ordinary werewolves that are nearby. A werewolf is knocked down by the main character's swinging kick, and a reward notification appears. Another werewolf watches as its kin is defeated. A glowing blue interface appears with a notification to level up to level 2. Lu Chen says that his level has been raised, but he's sorry that the shard of evolutionary qualities is still level 0. He adds that he didn't drop any equipment, which seems unfair to him. He thinks about finding stronger beasts. A strong werewolf with glittering eyes comes out of the bushes. Lu Chen remarks that this monster looks cool. The protagonist assumes that he will get what he wants from it. 
Lu Chen thought that the werewolf in front of him is strong, but it's still level 1. The protagonist walks towards the enemy, clutching a club in his hand. He notices that he has level 2 in potions, so he decides to try and attack. The huge beast smiles evilly as it looks at Lu Chen. The protagonist attacks from a jump, but the monster blocked the attack and Lu Chen takes high damage. The protagonist warily looks at the enemy. He thinks about the damage of the strong werewolf being too high. Lu Chen and his opponent exchange bludgeoning blows against the backdrop of the green forest. Five minutes pass. The strong werewolf is defeated and the protagonist receives 20 aura points, as well as shards of talent evolution and level 1 quality. Lu Chen looks at the enemy he just defeated lying on the ground with a satisfied face. The protagonist says that he is grateful to Lin Jai for giving him the recovery potions, because otherwise he wouldn't have been able to do it. Lu Chen thinks about the fact that he has finally obtained a level 1 quality evolution shard. The sun rays illuminate the joyful face of the protagonist. Lu Chen receives a new equipment, the receipt of which is accompanied by a bright glow and notification. It is a shabby gray-colored werewolf club. Lu Chen clutched his new weapon in his hand. The protagonist shouts, wow, equipment dropped. The description of the club says that although it is shabby, it looks like a normal weapon and its damage is 3 minus 6. Lu Chen compares his new weapon with the old one, holding both batons in front of him. He thought of actually being able to sell the old weapon for 300 yuan and decides to go to the official website. A bright blue interface with a weapon assortment appears in front of him, where there are many choices of batons. Lu Chen says that there have absolutely been about 100 transactions, noting that this item is scarce. The werewolf flips through the store's assortment. He says he'll try to bid on a bat for 260 yuan. The protagonist presses the sell button, whereupon a bright flash appears and Lu Chen's bat disappears. The protagonist immediately receives a notification of a new letter. He looks at it with surprise. The werewolf opens the letter. A message appears in front of Lu Chen saying that the protagonist's baton was bought by Shi Si player and that the platform charges a 5% commission, resulting in 247 yuan being transferred to the bank card. Lu Chen decides to check the text messages on his phone using the in-game system. To do so, he turns on another blue in-game window. The protagonist reads a message from the bank saying that 247 yuan was transferred to the bank card at 1044. He is overjoyed when he realizes that everything worked. Lu Chen says he is no longer a loser and adds, addressing his sister, that her brother is finally making money. He jumps up in joy, raising his weapon-free hand up in the air. Behind the in-game character Lu Chen. The real him emerges and says that the experts were right when they talked about the unlimited business opportunities in the Nine Heavens. Lu Chen says on behalf of his character, Monsters, beware, Lu Chen is here. Lu Chen sprints at the two werewolves with his club, both of whom are defeated after a swift and swinging strike. The protagonist takes another blow to the head, after which another werewolf cried out in pain, making a funny expression on his face. Lu Chen's clothes flutter in the wind during the battle. The protagonist has a menacing expression on his face. In the heat of the battle he hits one of the werewolves in the face with his fist since he couldn't attack it with a club. Ten minutes pass. The beautiful blue sky shows clouds flowing across it. Lu Chen is already swinging the club at the werewolf under his other arm. But he is distracted by the in-game system notification. An in-game window appears in front of him with information about level and characterization upgrades. Looking at the notification, he rejoiced because his attack health, and defense had increased due to the level increase. Behind Lu Chen holding a club on his shoulder lie several defeated werewolves. The protagonist feels sorry that he killed 20 ordinary werewolves and one strong level 1 werewolf, and he got nothing. He licks his lips in anticipation and thinks about why not try to kill the nimble second level monsters. Lu Chen adds that there are 5 nimble werewolves in this area, 2 of which are level 2 and 3 of which are level 3. The protagonist attacks a second-level nimble werewolf from the back, making an apt kick to its head. The werewolf screams in pain. Lu Chen thinks he can try to kill the other four, since this monster came so easily to him. The monster with the smoking lump on its head rises to its feet and immediately strikes the protagonist with its club, who is taken by surprise and loses nine health from the attack. Lu Chen misses another blow from the enemy and is surprised at the low damage, which is slightly higher than that of the first-level enemy. The two werewolves take their battle stances and attack each other simultaneously, crossing their clubs in the heat of battle. The protagonist realizes that agility is responsible for the speed of the attack, but the damage is small. He casts a glance at one of the werewolves. Lu Chen thought that at such a small level, agility and attack speed don't matter, so he's going to kill the remaining ones one by one. 
The main character spread his legs wide and attacked two strong level 1 werewolves at once with a sprawling kick. Immediately after that, he switched to a nimble level 2 werewolf. Clutching the club in his two hands, Lu Chen makes a swing straight towards the enemy's head. The beautiful blue sky with occasional passing clouds. Forty minutes have passed. The sky fills with smoke after a fierce battle, with Lu Chen emerging victorious, leaning over a mountain of defeated enemies. Leaning on his war club, he opens his personal profile via voice command, where he reads a description of his character's talent. The blue in-game window reads, Talent, Lower Werewolf Bloodline First Level. Attack has a chance of dealing a critical hit. 10% chance of getting a double critical hit. Talent Evolution Shard, 0 out of 40 second level. Trade Evolution Shard, 0 out of 21 ST level. Reputation, 0. While propping his chin up with his hand, the protagonist notices that his talent has been upgraded to level 1, allowing double crit to fall with a 10% chance. Lu Chen notes that by selecting one of the three quality upgrades, you can get a 50% increase in base stats. The blue game window shows the characteristic at the first level quality. The protagonist decides to choose a power and presses it with his finger with a sharp claw. The character Lu Chen's characteristic values have increased. He looks at the new values and the characteristics with awe. The protagonist says that he has become a strong werewolf and raises his club up, then adds that he should not relax and that he needs to keep on improving. Half an hour later, Lu Chen defeats a strong, tough and agile werewolf. The protagonist says that this werewolf had a long name, and then adds that his own level has increased to level 4 and he needs to sell his old battle clubs. In the store menu, Lu Chen puts up 5 battle batons for sale. He talks about putting up each of these battle batons for 300 yuan. While conducting in-game transactions, the werewolf says that he is only level 4 and needs to evolve further. Lu Chen immediately receives 5 sound notifications, turns to the envelope icon and says that he has received a text message. Notifications of successfully sold items pop up on the blue box. The protagonist cringes and says that this can't be happening, as not even a second has passed. He laughs a little after realizing the truth and shouts that he earned 17 Yuan in half a day. His eyes light up with enthusiasm. The protagonist says he will give Lao Lu money for new clothes. Lin Jai throws her hands up in the air with joy and shouts that she has finally found a club. She is wearing a lovely burgundy dress with a neckline. The woman wonders why Du Quan has so many clubs. It seems unreasonable to her. Her beautiful eyes are directed at the game information window. Flipping through the ranking table with one hand, she thinks about the fact that Du Quan has the highest level in the district. But there is no player with that nickname in the top 500 of the district. After looking at the entire ranking list, Lin Jai realizes that she is not even in the top 500. She slams her fist against her palm because she assumed that Du Quan didn't use this bat but was selling used weapons. The girl with brown hair tells Lin Jai that a live broadcast is needed right now, and Lin Jai responds approvingly. She greets the viewers by introducing herself as Feng Lin Jai and says she's going to show the situation in the newcomer village. In the background of the Anchorwoman, the players are fighting werewolves. Lin Jai adds that there are now over 100,000 people in the village, so it will be problematic to get out if someone enters the game. The crowd is outraged as they watch the coverage. A woman with purple hair yells that more newbie villages could have been made and that she has been online for two hours. She then yells at the man next to her who pushed her. The woman continues her outrage, the crowd around her paying attention to her. She is not happy that there are more people than before even though the village is full. The woman then says that she will soon run out of patience if she continues to be pushed, and that she will soon be unable to control herself because there are so many people. Lin Jai on the broadcast recommends buying a bat and calls the players into the shop to buy one. Holding the bat with a happy expression on her face, she says that even though it's a level 1 weapon, it can kill hundreds of enemies. An in-game window opened by Lu Chen is placed against the blue sky. He thinks about how the popularity of the baton is not surprising. Holding one of the clubs on his shoulder, he adds that the newcomer village is hell and it's a good thing he's a werewolf. The protagonist, thinking there are only 30 monsters or so here, shuts down the broadcast with his clawed finger. He decides to farm four special werewolves, then stabs one of the werewolves standing among a crowd of others like him with a club. Lu Chen kills the two werewolves, after which two notifications appear. The first one was level 4 and the second one was level 3. The protagonist crosses his battle batons with a huge werewolf with evil eyes standing in front of him and shouts that his talent and qualities are improving and these special monsters are not weak at all as they are one level higher than him. Lu Chen with a lunge attacks the large werewolf right in the head, after which it promptly falls in the opposite direction. 
the agile level 5 werewolf is killed, and the protagonist gets another shabby werewolf club. Lu Chen, after a brief mockery, says that he will get another 300 yuan. The club shines in the protagonist's eyes as its characteristics are impressive. He shouts with joy that the bludgeon is very cool. He thought about its extra attack and attributes. Lu Chen strokes his club. The protagonist thinks about the fact that the strength of the club increased by two increases attack by and defense by one. With a pensive look staring at the game window, he adds that a physique increased by two units adds 40 points of health and 40 points of physical strength, divine equipment for first and second level players. Lu Chen thinks about how much to sell this cudgel for. The protagonist opens the forum by swiping his finger across the game interface and says he hopes someone can give him some good advice. In the forum interface, the protagonist's message pops up in front of Du Quan's werewolf avatar, asking how much to sell the baton for. He is answered by a man with a grey ponytail who says that it is the best club in the world and there is nothing better than it. Then a user with a mountain on his avatar writes, saying that there is no point in discussing such useless things and that he would buy such a baton for a million yuan if Du Quan really sells it. The man with the ear piercing answers last, wondering if Du Quan would sell such a club if he really had one. He bets one cent that Du Quan doesn't even have a regular baton. Lu Chen touches his helmet in real life. He resents the fact that there are only trolls on the forum. The protagonist is holding his head while controlling his in-game character. With a happy expression on his face, he yells that he completely forgot about the auction and the need to start it. Lu Chen thinks that this bad is level 1 anyway, so he puts it up for auction with a starting price of 1000 and a final price of 18 -0. The protagonist decides that he needs to take action as soon as possible since other players are making good progress. He thinks about trying to sell the baton in half an hour and closes the game interface, then adds that he will earn 3000 yuan if he can sell the baton. The girl with short brown hair says that Du Quan auctioned off a club with a starting price of 1000. The man with the sword behind him says he wants to find this stupid person, but the girl stops him, saying that the same player had sold 5 batons at normal prices before. Lu Chen receives notification of a level 4 werewolf being killed, as well as receiving another shabby werewolf bat. The protagonist, leaning on his spiky club, thinks about getting another 300 yuan for the club and upgrading his character to level 5. He adds that he only has shards of evolutionary talents and qualities of the first level, and that he needs to deal with it. Lu Chen walks among the wilderness looking for an opponent and finds a clearing. His facial expression becomes surprised when he finds a monster. The protagonist thought that this monster is different from the others. A huge particularly agile werewolf with a scar on its forehead and piercings in its ears is looking at Lu Chen from the tree. The protagonist thought that from this werewolf, a shard of level 2 quality evolution should fall off. With a happy face, Lu Chen clutched his mace in two hands and attacked the scarred werewolf. The scarred werewolf swings for a claw strike, and Lu Chen strikes with his club. They deal a lot of damage to each other in the fight, until the protagonist gets lucky with a double critical hit. A notification appears in a blue box, stating that the protagonist receives 70 aura points, as well as evolution and level 2 talent shards. Lu Chen stands over the defeated scarred werewolf and thinks about the level 2 shards and the fact that he will now seek out and kill monsters with the special prefix. It's midnight and behind the clouds, a bright starry sky with a crescent moon in the middle can be seen. Lu Chen stands in front of the shining starry sky and thinks about the fact that he had been playing all day and had reached level 6. It took him 10,000 experience to level 5. The protagonist opens his personal profile with his current attributes. Lu Chen noticed that his attributes doubled after he received the level 2 shard. The protagonist worries that because his prefix is getting longer and longer, they will be able to find him even if he hides behind a tree. He imagines hiding behind a tree and his prefix is so wide that its edges are peeking out from behind the tree. Lu Chen is tired after a hard day. He is going to go offline and play tomorrow. The werewolf is stretching due to fatigue. He decides to deal with the equipment he received. The protagonist sells an ordinary bludgeon for 300 yuan, looking at the auction interface with enthusiasm in his eyes. He also put up two better batons, whose specialty is that their dexterity is low and their price is 700 minus 800 yuan. The protagonist is enveloped by a blue glow when he exits the game. He wonders if Lao Lu has returned, as her brother has earned some money. The game reality is interrupted as Lu Chen removes the game helmet from his head. He thinks about the fact that he's finally out. The protagonist looks at his foot with thoughts of it warming up. The guy thinks that in the future he will be able to walk again. With enthusiasm on his face, 
He raises his hand to his chest and clenches it into a fist. Lu Chen thought about the fact that he didn't buy a used gaming helmet for nothing. The protagonist is interrupted by the noise of a door opening, his mouth involuntarily ajar. He turns to the source of the noise and thinks of Lao Lu working overtime again and coming back late. The girl with the bag in her hands tells her brother that she is home, and then takes off her shoes before entering the apartment. Lao Lu informs her brother that she has earned a lot of money. The brother and sister look at each other. Lu Chen asks how much his sister drank and talks about telling her to drink less. The girl approaches her brother to tell him that her company will register in Nine Heaven, and she will be the main cotter. The brother looks at his sister in surprise and asks, is the company going to register in the game? With red lipstick on her lips, Lao Lu responds positively to her brother and says that the head office believes that the business opportunities in the game are endless. She adds that their company was given 5 million to register in Nine Heaven and everyone has just finished celebrating. With admiration, Lao Lu informs his brother that his sister has taken the honorable position of deputy team leader. The sister sits on his brother's lap and he asks her to get off him. He says his sister has grown up but still doesn't know how to be careful. Lao Lu asks her brother about what she should be careful with since they are not siblings. The brother says that's why they should be careful. Be careful for what? I've already decided, she said. Lao Lu hugs the guy in with a happy face and says she wants to take care of him for the rest of his life. He wanted to say something in response but was interrupted. Lao Lu stroked the embarrassed protagonist and then lowered him to the ground. The girl bent over her embarrassed brother and continues instead of her brother. She says that her brother had a horrible set of words to say about him ruining her life. The girl continues, telling her brother not to worry. Nine Heaven has attracted hundreds of millions of people around the world. Lao Lu shows her index finger to the main character and talks about how the business opportunities in the game are huge, as there are 500 major companies represented there, including China's intelligence agency, Korea's Ministry of Defense, and U.S. intelligence. She then tells her brother that she will take care of him. Hugging his sister, Lu Chen informs her that he has something to say, then continues telling her not to get too worked up since he's been in the game all day, and she doesn't need to care. Lao Lu closes her eyes and falls asleep from exhaustion after a day of work. She manages to say she's going to fall asleep. Lu Chen thinks about meeting her in the game since she is already playing anyway. His face looks a little anxious. The protagonist thinks about the fact that the game has registered government services and other secrets they don't know about. Day 2. Lao Lu texts her brother on messenger about going out and leaving rice in the pot. She encourages her brother by saying that she will find a way to get the protagonist back on his feet. Lao Lu sends a smiling emoji and the brother responds with the exact same one. Lu Chen in the in-game helmet thinks about how Lao Lu Lu has grown while the game world loads. The protagonist in the body of his in-game character opens the game interface. He is happy that he is a monster, as he has sold out all of his loot and earned 3,915 yuan. Lu Chen decides to go to Lin Jai's live broadcast to see how the other players are doing. On the broadcast, Lin Jai looks upset. She puts her hand on her head. The girl says that this game is difficult, because she played until 4 o'clock in the morning and only got to the third level while the best player is already the fifth level. The broadcast leaves comments floating through the video. Lin Jai says it's all thanks to Du Quan's baton player. She calls him cool since he sold a lot of clubs. The girl hugs her club with a happy expression on her face. The commentators accuse the Du Quan player of not playing fair. Lin Jai tells the commentators not to say so and adds that she heard that he participated in the closed test. Lin Jai tells the commentators not to say that and adds that she heard that he participated in an internal test. She assumes he's a closed beta test participant who knows how to farm doobies. She closes by saying that they will be hunting monsters and adds that the village is tight on monsters due to the large number of players. The girl waves to her audience while Lu Chen presses the buttons to control the interface. The protagonist thinks that Lin Jai has a nice figure and that she is cute, then sends her a small donation as a thank you. The girl notices Du Quan's donation of 66.6 yuan, surprised that he was watching her broadcast. Lu Chen thought about the fact that he needs to pump up his game character since it's a new day. The main character instantly kills two werewolves, gaining aura points and evolution shards for them. The second one drops a used club. Three hours pass. Lu Chen now has the prefix particularly strong, particularly nimble, particularly sturdy werewolf. The protagonist laughs as he realizes that his shard of qualities has reached level 2 and he has reached level 7 and his health points are now 740. Lu Chen looks at his long prefix with worry in his eyes and wonders if he can hide it. He immediately dismisses the thought and thinks about the fact that he will become more pumped up. 
The protagonist looks around in the middle of the wilderness. He is afraid to guess how long his name will be when he upgrades and assumes that he will be visible 800 meters away. Lu Chen is greatly surprised. He involuntarily opens his mouth. He saw an elite monster that he immediately decides to go to. The elite monster is an 8th level werewolf master Chan Casey, walking around the clearing surrounded by weaker werewolves. In addition to Chan Casey, the protagonist also notices 10 other cool monsters and a dozen high-level monsters. He wonders what he should do since he can't kill them. Lu Chen has a look of fear on his face that goes through him like a bolt of lightning. The protagonist is thinking hard about a way to win. He only has 4 healing potions in his inventory, which is not enough to win. Lu Chen looks through his item list using the game interface. He also finds 17 clubs there and a large number of 0 to 2 items, not enough to gain reputation. A drop of sweat runs down his face, his pupils getting small. The werewolf remembered something he had forgotten about. There are 3 items in the game interface, among them is a legion recruitment order, which is worth 10 reputation points. The protagonist thought about the fact that this is the only item and it might be useful. A description of the item appears with a description of its principles of operation. The first principle describes the ability to hire a monster, but the player's rank and qualities must be higher than the monster's. The second principle describes the peculiarity due to which hired monsters disappear after death without losing anything and returning the order of recruitment to the Legion. The third principle describes a method of recruitment during which a duel takes place without the use of potions. Recruitment fails when the player attacks. The recruited opponent will save one health point. According to the fourth principle, recruitment may fail and the target dies. According to the fifth principle, in case of successful recruitment, you can use prestige and enhancement shards to improve attributes. The protagonist props his chin up as he reads the item description. He thinks that recruiting one subordinate is not enough and assumes that the item can be improved. Lu Chen decides to try the item since it only costs 10 reputation points. He shouts to the team to buy the Legion recruitment order. The protagonist clutches his new item in his hand, which looks like a small shield with a star symbol. He says that this item is unfair because the purchase is worth 10 points and his upgrade is 500. Lu Chen decides to go farming, and then decides to sell all the items first with the hopes of advancing to the third level. Tears flow in rivers from the main character's eyes as he looks at his items in the game interface. He feels sorry for his level 3 items, which he obtained with difficulty. The symbol on the Legion recruitment order has changed. It now looks like a circle with 3 stars. The protagonist thought about the fact that he had finally pumped the item to the third level, and now he could recruit 3 monsters. Lu Chen defeats the first monster in the duel with an accurate jump kick. A notification of successful recruitment appears. The protagonist immediately defeats the second monster, dealing 36 damage to it. A short time later, the third monster is defeated. The blow turns the werewolf in the opposite direction of the protagonist. Lu Chen faces the 3 werewolves he has just recruited. He decides to improve all three of them to keep them safe. Tears flow from his eyes as he thinks about how poor his werewolves are. The werewolves with clubs in their hands stand behind the protagonist, their prefixes written above their heads. Lu Chen raises his fist with excitement on his face. He shouts to his werewolves that he is bankrupt and they need to kill more mobs. The werewolf prepares to attack with a menacing expression on his face. One of the werewolves takes a swing, making a jump attack while the other two deal with the enemies on the ground. Their eyes glow brightly in the heat of battle. Ten minutes pass. Lu Chen encourages his werewolf by calling him Sun. The werewolf with shining eyes holding a club in two hands runs at his enemy, a large werewolf. The enlisted werewolf makes an attack on the large werewolf with glowing red eyes. He took more damage than his huge enemy when they crossed their clubs. Lu Chen is surprised by such a monstrous attack and notes that it's not bad for a mini-boss. The protagonist orders the second werewolf to stop attacking and the third to jump on top. The two recruited werewolves simultaneously attack the mini-boss, who defends himself with his club. At the same time, the protagonist attacks from the other direction and shouts that he will provoke the enemy. The mini-boss takes a wide swing, but Lu Chen blocks his attack while his subordinate hits the mini-boss from the side. A notification appears to receive 360 aura points for defeating the werewolf master C.H. Chan Casey. The protagonist, surrounded by his subordinates, shouts that his werewolves are strong and smiles at the defeated enemy. A notification appears to receive the third level enhancement shards. The protagonist shouts that he has received three shards. Equipment drops from the defeated enemy. The items include a level 5 white leather glove, a dilapidated vest made of werewolf fur of level 1 gray, and a huge old club with shards of rock of level 5 green. The protagonist exclaims about finding the green gear. 
He looks lovingly at his shiny new cudgel. The club is level 5 and the attack is 9 minus 15. Strength and physique have been increased by 6 and dexterity by 8. Lu Chen thinks about the fact that this baton has great damage and the attributes only make it better. He adds that he doesn't want to sell it and doesn't know what to do. The protagonist orders his three subordinates to go farming, killing level 7 minus 8 werewolves one by one. He points them in the right direction, holding his club on his shoulder. Lu Chen also tells his subordinates not to go too far and to remember to pick up their gear, to rest if their health drops below 40%, and lastly he asks them to let him know when Chen Casey is revived. Lu Chen thinks that because he doesn't want to sell the baton, he'll just wait for Chen Casey to revive to kill him again. The protagonist is looking at the game interface. The protagonist thinks about the possibility of ordering them to sweep all the monsters since their efficiency will be higher than his. He decides to go to the broadcast to see how the other players are doing. On the broadcast, Lin Jai asks the players to log in and level up as the 10th level main city is open in the Nine Heavens. Lin Jai hits a werewolf with a club, with only his hand visible on the screen. She talks about the possibility of switching to nine main professions in the city, such as Poison Master, Puppet Master, Archer and then the game becomes much better and more interesting. There are two other girls standing beside Lin Jai. The girl with purple hair says that the most advanced players have not reached level 5, and they still have a long way to go. The girl with black hair tied up in a ponytail says that 10,000 experience is needed to advance from level 5 to level 6. The girl with purple hair suggests Lin Jai to join a group since there are already a few formed. Lin Jai replies that joining a group costs resources, which they don't have a lot of. The protagonist is interested in the groups. He opens the game interface page with a list of groups. Lu Chen is surprised by the number of groups and alliances and notices the teams of experts among them. The protagonist sits with a peaceful face. The game seems more and more incredible to him. Eight hours pass. One of the protagonist's werewolves touches his face with a clawed paw, and he wakes up. Notifications pop up that subordinates have tried to wake the protagonist. Lu Chen crosses his arms and looks at his subordinates. The protagonist thinks about the fact that it's already 7 a.m., and Chen Casey is revived every eight hours. He adds that it's been too long already. The protagonist opens his personal profile by voice command. Lu Chen decides to look at his attributes and buy a couple pieces of equipment, get dressed and go to Chen Casey. While the interface opens, the protagonist stretches out being sleepy. Lu Chen falls to the ground. He is shocked that he has managed to pump to level 8, and almost reached level 9. He asks his subordinates if they have been pumping all night. The three subordinates of the protagonist nod frantically looking at him. He calls his subordinates farming machines while he puts on his new shoulder gear. His face expresses joy. Lu Chen says that with such werewolves, Chen Casey is not afraid. The protagonist calls out to his subordinates and says he will fight using a huge club with rock chips. He walks forward. His subordinates stay behind him. The protagonist wonders how much he can sell a green level suit for. Standing over the defeated Chen Casey, the protagonist shouts, rock chips, chips. He receives white, green, and gray quality items along with level 3 evolution shards. The protagonist lists the items he has found, a W, shoulder pads, and a club with debris, and then asks his subordinates if they have collected the gear. They look amongst themselves fearfully while Lu Chen looks at the in-game interface. With joy on his face, the protagonist calls his subordinates tough when he sees 20 clubs. He thinks about how he used to get frustrated when he auctioned off the bats at high prices, but now you can cash in on it. Lu Chen notices that the price of equipment has dropped a bit, and a normal club costs 280. He flips through the list of items with his clawed finger and thinks that the six unusual items might be more expensive. The shoulder pads cost 700 to 150. Lu Chen wondered how much his green level bludgeon was worth. He examines it while propping his chin up. Lu Chen decides to ask on the forum. The protagonist instantly receives two notifications of items for sale. He calls out how quickly the items were bought. He assumes they are in demand and decides to turn off the email requests. He calls his subordinates stupid and says they should keep farming. They stand still and look fearfully at Lu Chen as he yells at them. Lu Chen opens the forum. In the forum, many users are posting about the appearance of white items in the shop. The protagonist wonders if white gear is really so popular and points out that someone has noticed it. While looking through the forum posts mentioning Du Quan, the protagonist thinks that the monsters are not on the game lists, but he can't hide his nickname when he sells them. He notes that it's only a matter of time before he gets noticed. Lu Chen thinks of publishing a post with green gear to see how users react. 
the protagonist sends an anonymous message asking how much his baton can be sold for. A user with a muscular arm in his avatar doubts that such equipment exists, but writes that such equipment will be bought for 5000 A user with glasses on his avatar writes that the price is exaggerated and it is better to keep the item. A user with a female torso in a pink dress on his avatar asks where to get such shoulder pads. The one without an avatar asks other users not to answer because it's fiction. The last user asks if Du Quan asked the question about the baton. He thought it was just a level 5 equipment and decides to sell it for 5000 A shop interface appears in front of the protagonist, where he puts up his baton at a starting price of 1000 yuan and a maximum price of 5000 yuan. He thinks about the fact that if he doesn't like it, they won't buy it and he can still get another one soon. A girl with purple hair shouts for Lin Jai to come over and informs him that Du Quan has auctioned a green level baton with a maximum price of 5000 Lin Jai replies that the white equipment has recently appeared and he has also placed a green one. A purple-haired girl looks at Lin Jai and asks her if he has added her to his friend list. Lin Jai replies that there must be many people who have already added him as a friend. Lin Jai asks to track his ID and let her know when he logs onto the broadcast. She adds that she will think about how to friend him. The girl with purple hair looks at Lin Jai in surprise. The protagonist's werewolf attacks another monster right in the stomach. While Lu Chen is busy fighting the werewolf in front of him, another werewolf swings at him from behind and is about to make a strike. The protagonist decides to put aside thoughts of the others and try to level up to level 9. Two and a half hours pass. Lu Chen says that 50,000 experience is needed to upgrade from level 8 to level 9. He looks at the blue window of the game interface with a surprised look. He also notices that it takes 100,000 experience to level 10. But the damage is already over 660 and the health is 1150. Lu Chen sees a blue light near the two defeated werewolves. He wonders what is falling there. 15 vials of health potion appear in front of him, which he is already holding in his hand. He assumes that they were left behind by the players. Lu Chen screams, wondering why the players go out to kill monsters if they can't defeat them. In front of the protagonist's eyes, four more blue glows appear nearby. Lu Chen quickly jumps from one glow to another and picks up more healing potions. He thinks about how big the catch is this time and that he won't be able to buy as many potions as he just picked up. Two players find the main character lifting potions, a man with black hair tied back in a ponytail, and a girl with gray hair. The man yells out that they've found this boss. The girl assumes the werewolf master in front of them, but can't remember his name. The black-haired man says it's the boss because of the long prefix. Lu Chen gets to his feet, his long prefix towering over his head with a menacing expression. The man asks the girl if she sees the werewolf's shoulder pads and rock shard club to which the girl replies in the affirmative. The protagonist thinks about these men claiming his equipment. He has a drop of sweat protruding as he looks at his club. Three more players appear and attack the protagonist holding the club in his hand. The bald man shouts that C.H. Chan Casey is in front of them. The man with the brown braid offers to kill the werewolf and that they will get rich. The bald man points out that Lu Chen's equipment is similar to the one Du Quan was selling and adds that if they get the rock shard baton, their team can be the first to capture the 10th level main city. A girl with a bandaged arm asks her partner if they can kill the boss. The man with the dark scarf answers her, thinking that since Du Quan could do it, they could do it too. The man with the dark scarf jumps at Lu Chen with a battle cry and swings his baton. The man is hit right on the head, but the protagonist's face expresses calmness as he only took one unit of damage. The attacker is shocked at such a low damage, the protagonist didn't even stagger. Lu Chen immediately thought that he was tickled. After all, his armor is 28, and they have level 5 armor and 20 minus 23 damage with the bat. He wondered if it was normal for the game to deduct so little health. The crowd of players are at a loss for such low damage, everyone is in shock. A man with a brown ponytail screams asking what kind of armor the boss has. The short-haired guy claims the werewolf's health is 1150. A man with piercings is amazed at the strength of the protagonist a girl with long white hair named Bai Ryu props her chin up with her hand and says not to panic, it might just be the lowest damage. She adds that they have potions and will slowly stab him to death. Lots of swings and punches are aimed at the protagonist but each punch deals one unit of damage. The main character with a frustrated face does not react to the players taking damage from them. The players attack Lu Chen jumping on him. He realized that it was not the least damage, as he continues to receive only one unit of damage each. Immediately two clubs hit the main character's head. He thinks to himself that the players are crazy and it doesn't make sense to call this damage the lowest damage. His face becomes extremely angry and his eyes glow red. 
Lu Chen thinks about the fact that now he's going to beat them up and watch them die all day. The protagonist hits one of the players with a club, dealing 52 damage. The player yells that the club has reduced his health by a sixth. Lu Chen kicks that player in the back. The man staggers back and takes 101 damage. He yells that he needs a potion immediately. The player moves away from the werewolf and drinks his health potion. Lu Chen watches the enemy carefully. The man in the orange scarf says that the potion restores 10 points per second for 10 seconds with a 10 second cooldown, and that it's too late. The purple haired girl commands to jump on the werewolf one at a time. The players all attack Lu Chen together. The man with a bare torso who will attack from the side commands them not to panic and says that they should pay attention to the speed and position of the werewolf. At the same time three more players attack Lu Chen from the other side. A girl with long hair hits the werewolf but misses. One of the players is surprised by the speed of the protagonist. Lu Chen hit the girl with long hair, damaging her clothes. She cries out sharply in pain. The girl runs away from the protagonist, and the man with short hair yells that they can't win and commands them to retreat. Lu Chen runs after the girl. The protagonist shouts that he won't let them escape, opening his mouth wide. His eyes shine with a bright red light. In one broad sweeping leap, he hits three players at once, two guys and a wounded girl. Lu Chen picks up 27 vials of healing potion from the injured girl. He says he made a lot of money this time. The protagonist assumes that the players must have seen him selling rock chip gear, and that's why to see Chan Casey. The protagonist smiles evilly. He thought that once they saw his power they wouldn't dare to come to him again, so he can keep pumping for a while. He adds that he is not far from level 10. The window of the 14th floor of the Chengyuan building, Science and Technology Development Zone. A voice comes from inside, saying not to be upset because he is the boss and his level is three more than their own. The office workers are sitting at a long table. A man with backcombed black hair says he's impossible to kill. The man with the short brown hair agrees and adds that he has mad damage. An office worker with red hair suggests that the boss has some cool equipment or enhancement. Someone says not to get discouraged after that, because at least they found the boss spawn. The man with black hair gets up from the table and replies that it's not enough to get discouraged, but he doesn't understand how he alone managed to defeat them all. The man with brown hair agrees, while the red-haired man tells them to revive. The man with black hair has a drop of sweat running down his cheek, thinking about how Duquan was able to kill such a strong boss. The protagonist is thinking about the fact that his mail has finally run out and he doesn't realize if everything is sold out Lu Chen is sitting on a big rock looking through several windows with a list of messages at once. He yells that the prince of the royal family was killed in seconds. The protagonist smiles happily and says that everything is sold out and he already has 25,221 in his balance. Lu Chen scrolls through the message list. There are many messages from different players who want to buy equipment from the protagonist. He decides to respond in a monotonous manner, selecting everyone who has written to him and sending them a message thanking them and informing them that he doesn't add anyone as a friend and to send emails before sending the gear. Lu Chen closes the game interface and with a happy face says that he will keep pumping. Eight hours pass. The protagonist stretches, leaving his club on the ground. He says he has finally reached level 10 and is already tired, but he has 28 clubs, one shoulder pad, one breastplate, and rock chips. Lu Chen opens his personal profile, which details his current stats at the time of level 10. He says with a little laugh that he needs 100,000 experience points. Lu Chen adds that he doesn't know if there is anything new in the shop. There are three icons on the reputation store interface, body, bloodline, and mana. Lu Chen thinks about the three main items, which are estimated to be some of the most expensive. He goes to the body tab. There is a werewolf image that costs 1,000 yuan. The protagonist doesn't understand why he needs this image when he is already a werewolf. He goes to the bloodline tab. Under the icon of a blood drop with an ornament, a description pops up. It says the following, if you kill enough creatures of the same species, you can obtain the blood of a god creature, which must be released into the endowed substance to improve the quality of the existing substance. In other words, if you have the body of this creature, it can completely change the method of attack. The protagonist thinks that being able to change appearance and bloodline, replacing the method of attack is cool. He adds that he can turn into monsters in other words. He wondered if there was a human form. His pupils shrank at the realization. He could become human, decides to see the third property. The game interface shows an icon with a human controlling the orb. Underneath the icon it says that this property will allow the fourth attribute, mana, which allows for magical attacks and defense. The internal interface of the mana section appears, with two skills shown on a blue window. 
the first icon shows a seated person concentrating magic in their hands. According to the description, the skill is called Monster Meditation and costs 1,000 yuan. After cultivating the fourth attribute of mana, mana will be opened and strength will be increased. The second skill looks like two drops circling around a circle. It's called Yellow Level Law Description and costs 1,000 yuan. It goes on to say that by killing a monster, one can obtain the yellow level law and use it. Lu Chen thought it was good stuff and decided to sell the shards. The protagonist receives notifications that he has mastered the monster meditation method and will now receive one mana for every second of meditation. The next notification says that Lu Chen has activated the quadruple mana attribute and its initial value is now one. The werewolf sits and uses his hands to concentrate the magic power in his hands. The next notice informs that there are three ways to obtain mana, killing monsters, meditation, and using potions. It goes on to say that no other operations may be performed while practicing. The physical attributes of the hero have increased. Strength and build are now 42, and dexterity is 44. Mana equal to 1 and mana points 1 out of 100 have been added to the main attributes. The protagonist's face looks serious. Lu Chen realized that the mana points are his mana value, but one can only meditate when martial arts are not active. He stretches while looking up at the sky and says he will sell the equipment. He decides to see how the other players are doing and goes to bed. Lin Jai and the purple-haired girl are standing in front of the mountains. Lin Jai says it takes 20,000 experience to go from level 6 to level 7. She wonders when she will get to level 10 to go to the main city. The purple-haired girl tells Lin Jai that Du Quan has put up for sale the rock fragments at a price of 1,000. She stands in front of the defeated werewolf and says that Du Quan is cruel for putting up the rock fragments again. The purple-haired girl tells Lin Jai that she found out that Du Quan has logged into the stream but anonymously, and his number is 9527. Lin Jai looks at the broadcast interface and says that she will thank her subscribers and fans by picking one subscriber from the stream and giving him a baton. She hopes they will be lucky. Lin Jai claps his hands, congratulating viewer number 9527 for receiving the prize. Lu Chen is surprised that he got the prize even though he only logged onto the stream for a few seconds. The werewolf has a very surprised look on his face. The interface with the correspondence between Lin Jai and user number 9527. Lin Jai greets the protagonist and asks him to send an ID so she can add him as a friend. He replies that he'd rather give the gear to her fans. Lin Jai writes that it's okay in its fate, then asks him for his ID again. The protagonist refuses again, but Lin Jai insists. The viewers write angry messages as they watch the situation. Three minutes pass. Lin Jai is sitting at his computer. The main character asks what's behind the gift, and Lin Jai tells him to take it as a favor for her and asks him to take a screenshot of the baton. She wonders what kind of person Du Quan is and if it's so hard to add her as a friend. Lu Chen introduces himself and his three henchmen and wonders if they will scare the players. He has a skeptical expression on his face. He thinks Lin Jai is good because she helped him before and decides to help her too. In the interface with the protagonist's correspondence with Lin Jai, the protagonist agrees to accept the gift, but refuses to take a screenshot. The girl thanks him and asks if they will record the process of adding him as a friend and passing the baton on the broadcasts. Lu Chen agrees. A notification appears that Du Quan has accepted the friend invitation. The viewers comment on what is happening with interest. Lin Jai pressing her palm to her chest thanks Du Quan for joining them and officially declares that the poison mist forest leading to the 10th level main city has been opened. She wishes Vevo Du Quan to be the first to reach the main city. She rejoices that she is finally in Du Quan's friendship. Lu Chen looks at the translation propping up his chin and thought how inconvenient it would be to be removed from friends as soon as he took the prize. He decides to leave it as it is and remembers what Lin Jai said about the opening of the poison mist forest and decides to go see. Lu Chen looks at the huge forest area while clutching his green level baton. The protagonist comes across a smooth stone with information about the poison mist forest. It says that this is the only way into the main city of level 10, and it is home to a huge amount of monsters. Only one out of 10 people will be able to escape from here. It goes on to say that it is unwise to fight the monsters of the poison mist forest, but if they attack, you must engage them. A blue window appears with a notification that the protagonist has left the newcomer village and entered the poison mist forest. Lu Chen thinks about running through the forest quickly without fighting, and wonders how strong the monsters here are. He excitedly raises his fist and says he's enthusiastic. As soon as the protagonist entered the forest, he noticed a noise. Poisonous spider-like monsters appeared before him. 
A huge mother spider with a humanoid upper body and horns attacks the werewolf surrounded by small spiders suspended on a web. Holding a club prepared for battle the protagonist says they might even defeat him. The spider woman attacks Lu Chen twice, first with her clawed hand and then with her spider paw. The protagonist commands his werewolves to each attack one spider while he himself takes care of the mother spider and then kills the others. Lu Chen dodges the mother spider's attack just in time and leaps to hit her in the arm while his charges deal with the smaller spiders. The protagonist is notified of a poisoning condition that deals 20 damage per second for 5 seconds. He resents the poisoning, but notices that the damage is not high. Three minutes pass. Notifications for killing forest spiders appear. According to the first one he receives 75 aura points and level 0 evolution shards. Defeated spiders and the mother spider are defeated lying on the ground. For the second spider, in addition to aura and shards, Lu Chen gains one mana unit. For the mother spider, the protagonist received 20 aura points, level 3 evolution shards, and 1 mana. The protagonist says that he got 2 mana points and level 3 shards and that this place is not bad. Lu Chen opens his profile looking at the interface window with information about getting a new item. The screen shows a sturdy white spider silk bracelet, a level 6 item with the following stats, armor 6, poison resistance 3. There is also information about two sets of 2 and 3 items. The first one gives plus 3 poison resistance and the second one reduces poisoning time by 50% and gives plus 5 poison resistance. He says that sooner or later he will have to spend reputation points to open the fourth equipment slot, so he will wear the item as he will need the poison resistance. The protagonist looks at the bracelet he is wearing with a smile on his face. He notices that the bracelet has good characteristics. Lu Chen notices three more spiders descending from the trees, he looks at them happily. Five minutes pass. The protagonist says that this forest is too difficult and his three subordinates have not recovered yet, so he is not surprised that they did not survive. The protagonist stands in the middle of a dark forest with purple foliage. He adds that he is tired and is about to log out. Lu Chen from real life stretches out in his wheelchair and says that he is tired after a full day of farming. The protagonist looks at his arm, which he was previously unable to move. He is shocked that he can lift his other arm and asks how this is possible. Looking at his cured hand and shouts in delight that his fingers are not as flexible, but he can already move his hands. The phone rings, Lu Chen picks up the phone and immediately takes the call, it's his sister. Lao Lu and asks why it took him so long to answer as soon as he took the call. He replies that he was asleep and asks when she will come home and she replies that she doesn't know. Holding the phone in his hands, Lao Lu talks about how difficult the game 9 heavens is. Their team worked overtime, but they only made it to level 6. She adds that their boss bought each of them a club and that they should work harder to level up and go to the main city, then says goodbye to her brother. Lu Chen tells her not to worry and he has prepared a surprise for her. With surprise in her voice, she asks what the surprise is, but her brother replies that it's a secret and she'll find out when she gets home. Lu Chen drops the call and says that Nine Heaven is an awesome game and he will keep pumping tomorrow. He hopes he can be a normal person by the time Lao Lu comes home. Day 2. Two werewolves are attacking two spiders. The distant werewolf made a successful attack on the spider. Lu Chen thought about hurrying up and made a mistake, as spiders revive when the mother spider dies. There are four spiders towering over the sitting protagonist. He says there are more and more of them. Lu Chen receives notification of the death of his level 7 subordinate. He looks at the defeated werewolf. The protagonist shouts out the serial number of the defeated werewolf with all his might, worried about the loss. Two of the protagonist's subordinate werewolves are lying on the ground. Lu Chen is notified of their deaths, and he drinks healing potions in the heat of battle so that he doesn't die himself. Shouting that he fought them hand in hand, he frantically runs towards the enemy with the intention of attacking. Ten minutes pass, the game notifies the poison mist to come out of the forest. Lu Chen comes out of the forest, his eyes teary-eyed over the loss of his subordinates. He wipes his eyes from his tears. He is worried about not being able to save his subordinates. The protagonist's face fills with enthusiasm. He says that C.H. Chan Casey is about to be revived and he will borrow three werewolves from him. Lu Chen says that this time he will have to spend time training them, protecting them from monsters, improving their attributes and watching them fight. The new trio of werewolves fiercely fight spiders in the forest of poison mist. The protagonist says he has improved their attributes and they are consistently gaining 10 poison resistance. The protagonist hits the spider like a spear and shouts that there are so many monsters here, as if there is a treasure of Sha Fen Shudge. 
Lu Chen sees many spiders led by a new boss. He says it's another boss with a name surrounded by many smaller spiders. The boss with an upper body resembling a woman swings her clawed hand, revealing her name is the level 10 poison widow Alice Anna. The protagonist commands the second, third, and fourth to follow him and run on, fighting as hard as they can. The two werewolves jump and attack the spiders in midair while the protagonist stabs the spider with his club. Half an hour passes, Lu Chen and his charge leap to attack the poison widow, who can no longer fight. After the victorious strike, a notification pops up that they have received 400 aura points and three shards of third level talents and attributes each. The following items have been obtained, green quality poisonous spider fang, four pieces of spider silk, white quality poisonous spider armlets, and white quality poisonous spider gloves. Standing over the defeated poison widow from which the in-game items fell out, Lu Chen says that this boss did not disappoint him and three pieces of equipment fell out of it, including a green one. The interface shows a white quality and level 6 poison spider gloves with an armor value of 5 and a poison value of 4. The protagonist thinks that spider fang is a necklace and that to wear both you need to spend 816 reputation. The interface shows the characteristics of the green quality poison spider necklace. The item has level 8, adds 5 minus 9 damage, and the attack deals an additional 10 extra damage with poison with a duration of 3 seconds. Lu Chen says it's expensive, but we'll have to be patient and spend money on this gear. The protagonist with the new spider glove and necklace says he'll keep farming because these bosses are too easy for him. Poison Widow appears behind him and says that the bosses in the game revive too quickly. Lu Chen realizes that there's a reason why that stone tablet said that only 1 out of 10 people can escape, because the monster's revival rate is too high. The protagonist opens his mouth wide and shouts that he likes it, then tells his subordinates that he needs 80 more pieces of equipment. The protagonist lunges and lightning swings the Poison Widow right in the face, her head moved to the side from the impact. 5 p.m. Standing next to the werewolf in gear, the protagonist is surprised at the length of his prefix. It is now named as elite particularly strong, agile, and robust werewolf commander Black Burton level 11. He doesn't understand what Black Burton means in it and asks the system not to give random names anymore. Lu Chen says that his attributes have reached the third level. A menu appears with all of the main character's attributes, which are now level 11. He says that it took him a long time to achieve such attributes. In the game interface appears information about how to get the pedigree of the forest poisonous spider. For this you need to kill 1000 spiders. The protagonist says that he buys this pedigree because he is attracted by the ability to increase his movement speed. The protagonist improves the talent of the lower werewolf bloodline, after which his level is now level 3, and his double crit chance is 19%. Lu Chen also decides to improve the spider bloodline looking at its characteristics in the form of additional poison damage 20 units, which is 1% of upper health with an action time of 5 seconds and a 10% increase in movement speed. The protagonist decides to improve this bloodline to level 3 as well. Lu Chen feels the strength increase in him. The characteristics of the talent are now equal to the third level. A notification appears, informing him of the integration of the new bloodline and the change in appearance. Lu Chen's lower body becomes spider-like, he doesn't realize what is happening. The protagonist screams that he is now half spider and half werewolf. Lu Chen runs using his many spider legs and yells that his speed has become much faster. He also adds that this system wants to force him to buy skins. The protagonist says it's been a busy day, so you can rest he partially removes his helmet and eats bread while reading the forum. The forum users are discussing the protagonist's character. One user writes that Du Quan hasn't put anything up for auction, and that his inventory must be empty. Another user writes that he has a strong team, but now he has no chance because everyone is leveled up. The first user replies that he was just lucky, and the second user says that he was exhausted when everyone was leveled up. Lu Chen says that he almost forgot about the rock scraps that he sold yesterday were sold for more than 10,000 yuan. Today he's been farming spiders all day and hasn't sold anything yet. He adds that he has gloves from the forest of poison mist in his backpack, three sets for his werewolves and one set for him, for a total of five sets, as well as seven or eight wrist and leg protection gear. The protagonist is looking at a computer monitor with a helmet on his head. Lu Chen adds that it is unprofitable to sell now, for the other players have not reached the poison dooming forest. He reads the reports that Lin Jai has gone to the forest. The protagonist says that after C.H. Jan Casey will go to the Poison Mist Forest and spend more time there, and then adds that he needs to log in quickly. 
The players surround C.A. Chan Casey. The bald man suggests killing C.A. Chan Casey before he is stolen by the group that is already fighting him. Lin Jai turns to the group and tells everyone not to chicken out and tells them to take their time. Behind Lin Jai stands a girl with brown hair. Lin Jai tells everyone to be careful and to pay attention to the rock debris. She adds that if they grab the debris, they will have an advantage. Ahead of her are two confident men. The girl with brown hair tells Lin Jai to look in her direction. Their gazes are pointed in the same direction. It's Lu Chen running. He looks menacing and shouts that he will save C.A. Chan Casey. In front of the man with short gray hair and Lin Jai is the main character who is preparing to attack. The man is surprised at the speed of the monster. Lin Jai says he doesn't believe such a monster exists, and the man wonders if this monster was summoned by C.H. Chan Casey. Lin Jai says not to panic, because a summoned monster cannot be stronger than the main monster. Three men with clubs in fighting stances prepare for battle. The guy with red hair tells them not to be fooled by its formidable appearance and adds that they should allocate one man from each group to stop it. The bald man says to remember that if C.H. Jan Casey's health drops below 30%, he calls for a black burton. A man with a bare torso jumps at the protagonist with a club ready to strike. Lu Chen calmly waits for the attack. The man says that the black burton is bigger than C.H. Jan Casey. The man with a bare torso hits the protagonist on the head, causing only one unit of damage. The protagonist doesn't change his facial expression, but the man is shocked. The man is surprised by the one unit of damage. He assumes he didn't penetrate the armor. Lin Jai and the girl next to her are shocked. Lin Jai can't believe her eyes after noticing that the main Lu Chen has over 2,000 health. She assumes that he just has high defense. The brown-haired girl replies that he probably is. Lin Jai says that no matter how high the damage is, they need to survive somehow. The crowd of players are talking amongst themselves in the heat of battle. The man in the robe raises the club above him and shouts to the others not to panic. He assumes that the werewolf with spider legs has a high physical defense because his role is to restrain the players. The guy in the foreground agrees with the man in the robe and yells at the others to do their best to kill C.H. Chan Casey. Lu Chen says not to accuse him of being ruthless if the players are going to attack C.H. Chan Casey. On the left, the evil smiling face of the game character protagonist is looking straight ahead, while on the right, the real-life protagonist is doing the same thing with equanimity on his face. Lu Chen deals 202 units of poison damage to the gray-haired player, piercing him through and causing him to drop the club from his hand. The protagonist with the club on his shoulder holds the pierced man on his paw while two players watch, one with brown hair and the other with lavender hair. The three players are in shock. The guy with lavender hair doesn't believe the man with gray hair is dead. He adds that he had about 250 health. The man in the background yells that he died instantly. The guy in the robe asks what kind of summoned creature it is. Lu Chen with a menacing face spreads his arms wide and asks the players why they are staring at him. Then adds, am I that handsome? The players scream in fear after the main character's words. Lu Chen swings his club, hitting four players at once. He deals a lot of poison damage to the players around him. One of the men calls the protagonist's poison crazy, while the man with lavender hair bulges his eyes and yells that it's too late to take the potion. The five players around the protagonist are defeated. He continues to swing his club defeating more and more players. Blue particles appear above the body of the man in the foreground. The lavender-haired man points his finger at Lu Chen while behind him numerous players and C.H. Chan Casey watch. The lavender-haired man shouts that it's best not to touch C.H. Chan Casey yet because the spider leg werewolf is the real boss. He adds that everyone should hit the main character. The guy in the robe asks how he wants to kill him if they don't penetrate armor. The protagonist thinks about the fact that C.H. Jan Casey has some health left, but he can still be saved. Lu Chen swings his club while looking at Lin Jai standing in front of him. He mentally apologizes to her. The protagonist hits Lin Jai on the stomach with his paw, and she staggers back, taking 94 units of damage. Blue particles are emitted from her. The particles around Lin Jai become even brighter and she takes 60 poison damage. Lin Jai clenches her hand into a fist and yells twice about the 60 units of poison damage per second she is taking right now. Lu Chen says he made a lot of money and adds that he needs to go collect potions. He smiles as he stands in the middle of the field, blue rays appearing around him. He thinks he should go to Lin Jai's stream and see what the players are doing. He assumes they must be frustrated for a while. The protagonist's three subordinate werewolves are collecting items from the losing players. They collect them in sacks. Lin Jai says that the assassination of C.H. Jan Casey has failed. She puts her hand to her forehead with a disappointed face. The players behind her are also depressed. 
The guy in the t-shirt behind her says he didn't expect the black Burton to show up. The five players are talking amongst themselves. The man in the brown t-shirt says that black Burton is so strong that they are very weak to him. The bald man replies that they were beaten like children. The man in the orange vest says that only Du Quan has gone through this and unless he has an insider in Tianhang he will take it back. The man with brown hair in the foreground says he didn't expect their team to lose so quickly. The player with the nickname Pian she says he's tired and quits the game. Lin Jai is looking at him in the background. The players standing around Lin Jai are talking to her. The guy with gray hair asks if goddess Du Quan is friends with him and tells her to ask him how he handled C.H. Chan Casey. The bald guy in the background says he's impossible to defeat. The man with brown hair says Du Quan will tell her everything because she is so charming. Lin Jai asks if it's too much because they will rob him of his wealth. The four players look at Lin Jai and ask her to ask while calling her a goddess. A bald man tells Lin Jai to give it a try. The guy in the gray shirt says his he will tell them means he doesn't care about money. The bald man in the green shirt says he may not want to tell them, but why not ask? Lin Jai responds positively to the request. In front of the protagonist is a glowing game interface with a message from Lin Jai. She writes that C.H. Chan Casey is driving her to despair. She asks Du Quan for tips on killing C.H. Chan Casey and especially the Black Burton and thanks the protagonist in advance. He says his goal is to go through the forest of poison mist and sell the things he gets there. He says that tomorrow should go something like this. Lin Jai gets a notification from Du Quan, who writes that the Black Burton doesn't show up every time, and then suggests trying again tomorrow. Lin Jai with a happy face claps her palms, looking at the interface with the message, she thanks Du Quan. The protagonist with a smile on his face turns to one of his werewolves and says that they will go kill C.H. Chan Casey since everyone is all together. He orders the second, third, and fourth to farm. Day 2. The three werewolves follow Lu Chen into the middle of the purple forest. The protagonist puts his finger to his lips and says that he's almost collected a whole set, so they'll go ahead. He adds that this game has amazing scenery. Outside the purple vegetation are high towering thickets of bamboo. The protagonist notices something long and bowl-shaped near it. The protagonist is attacked by a huge 10th level bamboo python with many heads. The protagonist shouts that this python is bigger than spiders. Lu Chen orders the second, third and fourth to overpower it and points his finger at the enemy. The werewolves look at the protagonist with frightened faces. One of the werewolves leaps and attacks the python with a club. The python opens its mouth to bite the werewolf. It does 6 damage and takes 12. The protagonist shouts that the other one is wearing a poison suit and his poison resistance is 19 while the enemy's poison damage is 20. The other werewolf shapeshifter defends himself with his club against the python's sharp jaws. Lu Chen shouts that actually this snake is like a level 9 widow spider. He calls this forest horrible. 10 minutes pass. Many pythons are standing in front of the protagonist's team with the intention of attacking. The protagonist holds his finger to his temple and yells that there are too many snakes. This game is trying to scare its players. He says that the battle has dragged on and not only does he have poison armor, but also a lot of potions. Lu Chen is handing out vials of potions to his recruited werewolves. He says that there are 80 potion bottles for each stupid one. Two hours pass. The protagonist is stretching while one of his werewolves attacks a python in the middle of the smoke with a club. The protagonist says he's awfully tired and wonders how long the grind will go on. He decides to quit the game, get some sleep, and deal with it tomorrow. The next day the protagonist says he slept well that night. He puts on his game helmet. The LEDs on it start to glow. He says he doesn't want to fight today. The protagonist adds that he will start running as soon as he enters the game and says it will be a miracle if he gets through the snakes. Lu Chen enters the game and notices that his werewolves are fighting with the snakes. He doesn't realize what's going on because he thought the three should have disappeared after exiting the game. The werewolf above his head says he's level 9, and he hits the python in front of him with a club. The protagonist notices that his werewolves are now level 9 monsters. Lu Chen, with a very surprised look on his face, yells that he doesn't understand what's going on or how this is even possible. He notices that the three of them were taking turns resting and farming. The protagonist looks at the werewolf leaning on the club in horror. He adds that since Lu Chen was gone, they shared the experience amongst themselves and improved the level. The protagonist's eyes shine with joy and he involuntarily opens his mouth. He shouts that he was worried about his subordinates' level improvement before. If he doesn't share what he's learned with them, they won't level up, and if they do, they'll get less. He adds that this is the perfect solution to the problem. He thinks about the fact that killing pythons is enough to buy a pedigree. 
Lu Chen turns on the in-game interface. He notices that the pedigree costs 2,000, which is too expensive for him, but he hopes that his talent won't let him down. A description of the bloodline appears in front of the protagonist. It is called the Inferior Snake Bloodline. It deals damage depending on the upper health limit and after poisoning with poison. It increases the damage dealt by 10% when the target moves one step. The bonus lasts for 7 steps with a duration of 60 seconds. Lu Chen shouts calling the talent cool and improves it twice. The protagonist's facial expression becomes troubled when he realizes that he will have to change his appearance but he is bought off by the fact that the poison of this appearance is stronger. The protagonist now looks like a snake with spider legs and the upper body of a werewolf. He screams that he's gotten ugly and remarks that the further he gets, the uglier he gets. He says he will be ugly, but strong. The protagonist has his eyes closed and is attacked by a python, which opens its mouth wide as it attacks Lu Chen. The protagonist makes a quick strike with the top of his club, which hits the python in the head. The protagonist notices that the poisons are overlapping each other, he watches with fascination. He notices that one lasts five seconds, the other seven steps and calls it awesome and laughs. He calls his werewolves and shouts that they will run through the forest. Lu Chen happily runs deep into the forest. Behind him are three werewolves with blue glowing eyes. The werewolves synchronously attack the pythons that have appeared, sneaking through them right behind the protagonist. The main character strives forward, striking the next enemy with his deadly blows. The main character scoffs and says, finally. He smiles evilly as he swings his club. Lu Chen notices something unusual and a drop of sweat runs down his cheek. He shouts that he has finally met the purple boss. In front of him is a level 12 Evelyncher Poison Mist Forest boss who looks like a woman with long white hair, blue skin and with a snake-like lower body. The protagonist says that this boss's equipment must be very durable. He is thinking to fight or not. The boss of the Poison Mist Forest has spider paws appear from behind her back. She stares intently at the protagonist. The protagonist shouts that he will fight her, since there are no monsters around her. He thinks he will win with the help of his two helpers. He runs straight at the enemy and swings his club, his subordinate werewolves running after him. The boss stands nonchalantly in the foreground. Lu Chen orders the werewolves to attack. The boss licks her lips in anticipation of the battle. She opens her mouth, after which a lot of spiderwebs are released from her mouth pointing at the werewolves. The three recruited werewolves are shrouded in spiderwebs. Lu Chen was also shrouded by the web. He shouts about the boss's skills and calls her a worthy boss. The boss's eyes glowed brightly, after which he immediately tore the web entangling him. He thinks about the fact that the three werewolves don't have enough strength to free themselves and need to be helped. The protagonist engages in melee combat. The boss deals 88 damage to him, and he deals 31. The boss is furious, and another exchange of blows takes place. The protagonist takes 86 damage while he himself deals 58 damage. After taking two hits from the boss attacking with his paws, the protagonist thinks her damage is a bit higher than his, but she has over 4,000 health and regenerates so fast that she is not easy to kill. A notification appears that his movement speed and attack speed have been reduced by 10%. A red aura appears around the protagonist. He thinks of the high damage, poison damage, high health and the reduced movement speed and attack speed. Her skills. He thinks that this Evelyncher is terrible and adds that this would be an impossible battle for any other team. Evelyncher takes poison damage and runs after the protagonist who runs away from her. Lu Chen is pleased to have learned the lineage of forest spiders, which are quite fast. He adds that he needs to keep an eye on skills, talents and health. The protagonist thinks of his werewolves to help him. Two werewolves with clubs run at the boss from the back, preparing their weapons for battle. Evelyncher turns back, her cheeks becoming puffy. She releases a spider web from her mouth, enveloping the werewolves attacking her with webs. Lu Chen yells out that her skill has no cooldown and he will have to rely on himself, his face expressing alarm. Looking at the enemy with a menacing gaze, he shouts that he will use the kite maneuver, killing her leisurely. Half an hour passes, the protagonist is notified that he has killed a level 12 boss. He receives 760 aura points, 4 level 1 talent shards and 3 level 2 quality shards, and receives 2 units of mana. Lu Chen also gets a few items, Poison Spider Silk Gauntlets White, Poison Spider Silk Greaves White, Evelyncher Armor Blue, Spider Silk Headdress Green, Durable Spider Silk. Lu Chen laughs a little and thinks about the four shards and five items he received, which include green and blue equipment. He stands over the body of the defeated boss. The protagonist adds that he didn't waste so much effort in this half hour. 
he decides to look at the attributes of the evil and sure armor in the interface they are indicated by the icon of a snake helmet. According to the description, they are the blue quality armor of the boss of the Forest of Poison Mist boss Evelyncher. They are level 10, give 21 physical armor and 3 magic armor, as well as plus 19 strength, plus 14 dexterity, plus 24 stamina, and a new skill that reduces movement and attack speed by 10%. The protagonist talks about the characteristics of the armor, he wonders how much he can sell it for. He puts on a heavy armor with dark steel plates and after a short laugh says that he got the Evelyncher blue armor and even if some of the players defeated C.H. Chan Casey, it will take a long time to get here, and he will earn a lot of money. Half an hour passes, the protagonist thinks about how fast the boss revived, because she revived faster than C.H. Chan Casey. He looks at her with bulging eyes, as he realized, C.H. Chan Casey is a regular boss for the players. The protagonist swings his club and hits the revived boss, smoke rises around and the boss attacks back with his paws. The protagonist thought that the forest of poison mist is needed to block players from entering the main city, so the movement speed of the boss here should be faster. Ten hours pass, in real life the protagonist stretches in his wheelchair. With a smile on his face he says that he is tired and after a long time of farming he has collected seven 17 poison kits, 19 Evelyncher armor, 11 spider silk headdresses and 19 shards. He decides to see how the other players are doing. He touches his finger to his helmet and says that they probably think that the protagonist got bored with the forest of poison mist and died. But no, it's time to get rich. The protagonist points his index finger at the blue window with the page describing the spider silk holoband. He says that the 8th equipment slot costs 4,000 reputation points, which is very expensive for him and adds that this helmet is good, 7 strength, 9 dexterity, 10 build. He decides to sell it after a while for a good price. Lu Chen reads the forum posts. He says that everyone is of course worried about the poison mist forest and the main character's well-being. The first user writes that his team has been defeated four times. The second user writes that the game wants to trap them in the village of newcomers. And the third user writes about the chance of 1 in 100 or even 1 in 1000. A fourth user asks if they've heard of the 7-step poison. The faster you run, the faster you die. A second user asks where to buy gauntlets from the forest of poison mist. The protagonist says that no one mentions Evelyncher and that no player has reached level 3. He taps the screen with a smiling face. Lu Chen adds that players have not passed the first level and no one has gained access to the poison mist forest. The protagonist talks about the next step is to cause a sensation. He is preparing to become rich. Lu Chen wants to cause a furor by advertising through Lin Jai's streamer, it's the fastest way. He presses the stream button with a happy expression on his face. He says he wonders how the beauty is doing. On the broadcast, Lin Jai is sitting leaning on a club while in the background one of the players is fighting a spider. Lin Jai yells that it's over and will have to go back. Lin Jai is holding her head with one hand, she is upset. The commentators write about the difficulty of the poisonous forest. Lin Jai starts holding her head with both hands and says that some teams say that the spiders have equipment to protect them from poison, but they don't. She adds that the poison mist forest is too hostile to a small team like them. Lin Jai's gaze is directed to the broadcast interface. She is reading the viewer's comments. She is asked to text Du Quan since she is the only one he has as a friend. She says she'll have to ask him even if he deleted her from his friends. Commenters write about Du Quan passing through the forest of poison mist, about him being missing for more than one day. Lin Jai asks Du Quan in a messenger if he has been to the poison mist forest and if he has poison proof gear. She asks him to sell it to her. One of the commenters says that she can't go through the forest unless she collects a whole set with poison resistance. The main character responds positively to her message. The viewers on the broadcast are surprised to see that Du Quan is alive and has extra poison resistance gear they wonder why he didn't sell it. Lin Jai thought about what he was saying about the poison resistance suit while looking at the main character's messages. She texts him that she will buy the gear. The protagonist asks how many sets of gear she will buy. Lin Jai types the messages on the keyboard. Lin Jai is surprised at the question of how many suits she needs. There is a look of concern on her face. The three viewers in the same room are reacting to the broadcast. The one in the middle is outraged by what the main character is saying. The man in the brown t-shirt in the foreground asks how this is possible and assumes he has many. The man in the blue t-shirt in the background says the protagonist is cheating them. 
Lin Jai asks if she can buy three sets with a worried expression on her face. She prepares to type the next message. On the messenger interface, she asks if she can buy three costumes, and the protagonist replies that each player on the marketplace has their own account, so he needs her to go there and send him the link. Lin Jai holds her index finger up to her temple. She tells the audience that she bought three poison-resistant suits and still can't believe it. The purchase window appears, showing the poison suit and the arrow underneath it with a price of 21,000 yuan. Lin Jai sincerely thanks Du Quan. She says loudly that this suit is really poison-proof and now she will be able to pass through those poisonous spiders. Lin Jai is wearing a spider silk suit. She raises her hands to shoulder level to examine the suit. People are writing in the comments wanting to buy the same costumes. The main character gets over 100 messages on his email asking him to sell the costumes. Lu Chen with a happy face says that it was a great advertisement and it got everyone hooked. But he says that the players are getting excited early. The main character wonders why he was able to go through the poison mist forest without a suit and defeated even Evelyncher. He says he will hold an auction tonight at 10pm and for those who are interested to come to it. The main character stares at his computer monitor, typing a message on his keyboard. He says, answer, and then adds that it's 20 minutes until the revival of Evelyncher and wonders if he should go for it. He decides yes and decides to put the gear up for auction. 20 minutes after the auction starts, a woman with pink hair and a very pretty dress shouts to the crowd to be quiet as the auction is about to start. The girl holds a large wooden hammer in her hands, preparing to strike the wooden stand. The protagonist says he's not used to this, but for the sake of the money he'll have to be patient. He looks displeased. The girl says loudly that she'll do without further ado, and then voices the lots, first with the spider silk headdress, which is sold in three pieces with a starting price of 2,000 yuan and a minimum upgrade price of 200 yuan. Someone in the audience shouts out stating that he thought that only poison-resistant suits would be auctioned. An interface with an image of a spider silk headdress appears. Another voice from the audience says that the gear is new, not bad, and gives 15 armor and 200 extra health. Another participant wonders where the headdress came from. Another bidder yells that he expected this from the cursed Du Quan. One of the bidders calls out his number 455 and the price of 2,200 yuan. The next bidder with number 198 calls out a price of 2,400 yuan, a girl enthusiastically holding a wooden hammer with her hand. The bidder with the number 1134 names a price of 3,000. The girl with pink hair asks if anyone will raise. She calls number 711 with a price of 98.0, counts to three and shouts that the lot is sold, hitting the wooden hammer on the stand. The protagonist's pupils look like dollars, he clenches his palms into fists, and yells about the helmet sold for 98.0 yuan. He wonders how much the poison-resistant suit in Evelyncher armor will be bought for. The auction sells the second batch for 94.0 yuan and the third batch for 98.0 yuan. Once the last batch is sold, the auction moves on. The crowd of auction bidders are shocked, they all open their mouths. One of them shouts loudly, wondering where Du Quan got so much stuff. Another attendee says he worships Du Quan because he seems to print the equipment. Another attendee calls the protagonist an employee of the Nine Heavens. Another attendee says that the appetizers are over and they are moving on to the main course. The girl in the red dress raises her hand above her, clenched into a fist. She says that next will be the costume from the Forest of Poison Mist that they have been waiting for so long sold in three sets at once. The starting price is 15,000 yuan, and the minimum upgrade is 2,000 yuan. One participant is surprised at three sets at once and wonders how many more sets the protagonist has. Another bidder thinks that selling three sets at once is a joke. The bidders watch with their mouths open. Another bidder yells out that he's placing a bid. Multiple people raise signs with the numbers and the price they are bidding. A girl calls out number 8 with a price of 40,000 yuan, asks if anyone else is raising the price and then calls out number 3 with a price of 45,000 yuan. The girl in the red dress raises her left hand as she waits for more bids. She asks if anyone else will bid. The protagonist with dollars instead of pupils admires the number of rich people and says he adores them. The girl in a red dress stands in the middle of a huge auction room next to a small table. He shouts out the price of 45,000 for which the set was sold to bidder number 3. The girl raises her hand again and addresses the bidders in the hall. She informs them that they are selling a second batch of the Forest of Poison Mist costume with a starting price of 15,000. A man with brown hair and cat-like pupils holds a sign with the number 40,000 in his hand. In the background, bidder number 3 looks at the three other players in front of him. The participant with gray hair whispers to his boss in the blue vest about the riches of number 3 
and informs him that he wants to pick up the second batch of the suit. He then adds that they should pick up the Poison Mist Forest suit, because the main city of level 10 is the confluence of three newbie villages and the pressure there will be immense. The boss in the blue vest raises a plaque with the number 47,000. Two more bidders raise their plates with numbers. A man shouts out the number 50,000 and raises his plate with the same number. The auctioneer bangs the hammer on the stand and starts counting down and then congratulates user number 27. She immediately says loudly that they are selling a third batch of five costumes at a time with a starting price of 25,000 and a minimum price increase of 5,000. The crowd of attendees immediately raises many signs. A girl in a pink t-shirt declares that Du Quan has a lot of poisonous forest costumes and raises a sign with the number 50,000. A man with a bare torso with shoulder pads and wristbands yells a minimum price increase of 5,000. A participant with black hair says he will fight to the end. One of the raised signs shows a very large number, 90,000. A bidder in a red vest with an irritated face yells that someone is crazy. The guy with the leather shoulder pads behind him is angry that five suits were taken. The auctioneer finishes the countdown and congratulates bidder number 27. The bidders begin to disperse. The man in the brown robe says to leave because it's over and he knew from the start that he wouldn't be able to get the items he wanted. The guy in the black t-shirt behind him says there are too many rich people in this world. The auctioneer thumbs up and says that today's auction was a success and she wants to make a free ad. The girl in the red dress says that many people think that after the snakes they will come out of the forest of poisonous mist, but in fact a worse ordeal awaits them. Three players sit at a table with frightened faces. The man in the green shirt asks what will be even scarier. The man with the bare torso says it can't be because they can't pass the snakes, and the man in the middle asks if it's true. In the background the main character is looking straight ahead. He is smiling evilly. In the foreground, the auctioneer touches a finger to the corner of her lips and says that she has another piece of equipment that could be very helpful in breaking through the forest of poisonous fog. The crowd of onlookers becomes noisy. The man with black hair asks if Du Quan has any more equipment. The man with black hair doubts that this equipment is so powerful, and the guy with gray shoulder pads asks what kind of equipment it is. Someone shouts that they are done with the main course and are now moving on to dessert. A game interface appears with the characteristics of the Evelyncher blue quality armor. The girl puts one hand on her belt and drops the hammer on her right shoulder. She says that the gear she wants to sell is the Evelyncher armor and says that they can familiarize themselves with its attributes. The crowd is extremely surprised at the blue quality armor. A participant in a green shirt exclaims that the armor is of blue quality. The bald man in the background speaks of his eyes turning red at seeing the blue armor in its full complement. The participant with brown hair talks about the characteristics of the armor. The man with the fur collar says that it still has abilities, namely reducing the victim's movement speed and attack speed by 10%. Lin Jai and the purple-haired girl are in the foreground, and behind them is a bald man in a black t-shirt. Lin Jai says this is the real dessert, the real cherry on the cake. The purple-haired girl asks how much it's selling for, and the bald man tells the auctioneer to bid. The auctioneer touches his index finger to his chin and says they are starting and tells them about three sets in one lot with a starting price of 15000 with a minimum price increase of 2000 Many price signs from bidders flash by. One bidder marvels at the three sets in one batch and adds that this gear is so fancy. Another bidder says that Vei Vo Dong Quan is invincible. Another bidder says that this thing is worth it. The auctioneer hits the wooden hammer on the stand and finishes the report with a price of 60,000 yuan. He bangs the hammer again. This time at the end of the report the lot is sold for 65,000 yuan. The third set goes for 63,000 yuan. The protagonist bangs on the table. Lu Chen takes off his gaming helmet with a cheerful expression. He says that the auction lasted just over an hour, and he received 10% of the auction fee resulting in a profit of 397,980 yuan. His total income is 450,000 yuan. Lu Chen thinks about the fact that his arm is fully functioning and he is starting to feel his leg. The protagonist adds that he and his sister should probably buy a new apartment. Lu Chen props up his chin with his finger and thinks that money is a little tight and he needs to save up a little. The protagonist looks out the window. He talks about how he sold so much equipment and wonders if anyone can get through the forest of poisonous fog. He says that it's none of his business anyway and he'll get more valuable equipment later, but now he needs to sleep. A man in a racial vest shouts out an announcement that a group of swordsmen, if and a group of wind bells have decided to break through the forest of poison mist together. He announces that the operation has begun. In the middle of the forest stand many men raising their arms with clubs high above them. 
The bald man calls out to kill the spiders. A huge number of players run with all their legs at the spiders hanging from the trees. One of the runners shouts that sooner or later they are bound to break through the forest of poisonous mist. A man with brown hair exclaims that the main city of level 10 awaits them. Two men with clubs attack the spiders that have descended to the ground. Lin Jai in her new armor spreads her arms wide. She turns her head toward the players on the team and says that she knows everyone is very tired, but asks them to keep going. The purple-haired girl says they killed the widow mother and appears to be wearing a gauntlet. Far behind the defeated spider, a man in a red vest raises a club up and urges them to go forward. A group of players attack the green snake with their clubs, blows flying here and there. One of the players commands not to disturb and tells teams 15 and 16 to move up. Lin Jai stabs the snake right in the mouth and loudly says that the poison is to blame and other lands are about to attack it. 4.50 am, Lin Jai runs ahead of the group and yells that it's over and they've passed. She exclaims that they have finally passed through the snakes and they are the first to do so. Lin Jai stops the team of players by raising her palm up. She orders them to stop and tells the others to look forward, pointing there with her index finger. She says it's the one Du Quan was talking about, someone scarier than snakes. A level 12 boss, the lord of the poison mist forest Evelyncher, appears in front of them, small streams of wind rushing around her. The player with the grey shoulder pad says that this is the lord of Evelyncher, and since Du Quan was able to defeat her, so can they. Behind him, the brown-clad player says that they will kill her and reach the main city. The man with the grey shoulder pad says he will start. Evelyncher attacks early, she is rapidly approaching the players. The man with the grey shoulder pad looks at her with bulging eyes. Evelyncher blows a web in all directions, entangling many players. One of them asks how to deal with her ability that has no cooldown. The cocoon man in the foreground says loudly, how did Du Quan survive? The boss with the glowing eyes seeks to entangle more players. The cocoon man says he's been trying to get through the forest all night. The next day comes, morning. Lu Chen puts on his gaming helmet and says well, the players are already at Evelyncher. He commands the second, third, and fourth werewolves to stop farming and it's time for them to go to town. Lu Chen looks at Evelyncher behind him and thinks that Evelyncher has some good skills and is worth learning. He adds that a brief volume on yellow level combat is still worth 1000 reputation, which is not very expensive. An interface appears on the screen with a yellow level battle brief volume costing 2000 reputation points. Its icon looks like a scroll with tentacles on the top and bottom. Lu Chen is outraged at the doubled price, but you have to buy it anyway. Evelyncher stands in the distance, and the protagonist reveals a long scroll. Lu Chen has a new skill, Web Entanglement. His icon looks like a man with his arms crossed and spider legs behind him. Using this skill requires mana to maintain entanglement and consumes one unit of mana per second. Up to 10 targets can be entangled at once. Species other than spiders need to spend additional strong silk to entangle a single target. The protagonist says that the skill is really good and it's a good thing he saved a few hundred webs. The protagonist with the Z-many part of his body crawls forward with three recruited werewolves behind him. Lu Chen commands the second, third and fourth to go. Ten minutes pass, the protagonist looks at the wooden sign with directions to the mountain of a hundred beasts, and the main city of level 10. Lu Chen says that with his status, he can't go to the level 10 main city yet, and will go to the hundred beasts mountain first. Lu Chen notices something, his mouth opens in surprise. He sees a huge mountain in front of him and notices that these hundred beast mountains are huge. With a club on his shoulder, the protagonist commands the werewolves to follow him and tells them to see if there are any monsters that would be suitable as his subordinates. An extremely agile wolf monster appears, his body covered in a small amount of gold armor and long earrings in his ears. Then a high damage tiger monster appears. It has red spikes on its back and two large fangs in its mouth. A tenacious bear monster comes out. He looks like a humanoid, his body is very muscular. One of its eyes has a scar on it. The protagonist thinks that these monsters are not bad, but hiring them as subordinates is a bit boring. Lu Chen and his subordinates look at the stone-labeled mass grave and think that this place is creepy, and there must be something special here. A notice appears that no one cares about decapitated bodies, the soul is hard to sleep in foreign lands, mass grave level 20. The protagonist touches the stone with his clawed hand. Another notice appears according to which the protagonist has exceeded level 11, and now he has no rookie protection. In the middle of the location, a hand comes out of the ground and the protagonist is confused. A dangerous opponent appears before him, a level 24 Stygian nymph. She looks like an undead girl with red hair and only a single spine between her upper torso and legs. Above her flies a skull glowing with blue fire. 
the protagonist screams that level 24 is too high with a shocked expression on his face. Stygian nymph swings her arm, preparing to attack the protagonist with the flaming skull. Her pupils glow blue in color. The skull with its mouth open quickly sweeps through the protagonist's werewolves, dealing first 94, then 51, 63, and 40 damage. The protagonist shouts that the damage is huge and hits several at once and adds that this is exactly what he needs. He looks at the Stygian nymph with an evil grin. More of the same dead rise up from the ground, the werewolves are surrounded by enemies on all sides. In the foreground are three ghosts with sheets on them. The protagonist commands the second, third, and fourth to go forward, but they one by one receive multiple blows from the flaming skull. The protagonist also gets hit by the skull that quickly catches up with him. The werewolves swiftly run after their master Lu Chen, running past gravestones against a backdrop of extinct trees. The protagonist says that this place is really creepy, and luckily their damage has lessened, as otherwise the second, third, and fourth wouldn't have survived. Lu Chen turns to his subordinates and looks at them with concern. He tells them to stay here and that he will pick someone up by trying out his newfound skill of entangling them with webs. Two minutes pass, the main character raises his hand above him and shouts out the name of the web entangling skill. The web comes from an orange stone on his belt, the web flies directly at his opponents. Lu Chen notices that he is in a silly pose because the skill is used in this way. As 10 minutes pass, a notification appears that Stygian Nymph has managed to become the main character's subordinate, and her level has been reduced to 11. The protagonist scrunches his nose as he looks at his newly recruited monster. He reveals Stygian Nymph's status. Her strength and agility are 30, build 24, mana 11, physical damage 74, magic damage 11, armor 15, health 1080. Her talent that reduces the armor of enemies by 10% is called the Bloodline of the Dead and it's level 3. Smiling Lu Chen says that due to her high damage, she can reduce the armor of enemies. He adds that we need to pump the Legion recruitment order to 5 and recruit another monster. 15 minutes pass, the protagonist looks at the two Stygian nymphs and says, success. A notification appears saying that the protagonist's squad has 5 subordinates and opens a mission hideout. Next comes the mission requirement. You need to banish the monster lord from the mountain of hundreds of beasts, and as a prize you can get your own plot. The last notice details the reward, namely getting the plot and the title of Tough Nut. The protagonist looks around carefully and says that his own plot is great, but he needs to pick a higher spot so that players can't get to it for a while. The protagonist smiles as he looks up at the top of the mountain and says that the top of Gunnion is by far the highest point in the Hundred Beast Mountains. He says that he remembers beating a level 25 levelless tiger lord here. The tiger looks at Lu Chen with its blazing eyes. It heads towards the protagonist with the intention of attacking. The protagonist thinks that the damage of this tiger lord is high, but luckily he didn't bring any of the other monsters. Two Stygian nymphs and three werewolves stand behind the protagonist preparing for battle. The protagonist commands the second, third, fourth, fifth and sixth to stay away and watch and says he will start. The tiger jumps at the protagonist with its sharp claws and strikes, dealing 313 and 327 damage to the protagonist, who staggers from the impact. The protagonist thinks that the attack was too fast and the damage is too high, and his health is not enough to deal with the monster. The protagonist with a menacing expression shouts to his subordinates to attack altogether. The werewolf in front of the protagonist has eyes that glow blue at the moment of the attack. The werewolves, together with the flaming skulls of the Stygian nymphs, simultaneously attack the tiger. Forty minutes pass, the defeated tiger lies on the ground. Two notifications appear in a blue window, presenting the protagonist with a choice. Kill the tiger lord and get the usual rewards to complete the mission which will reset the boss spawn. The protagonist tells the tiger to get out, which results in him turning around and walking away. The protagonist sits holding a club in his left hand. A notification congratulates the protagonist on completing the hideout mission and informs him that he has received the plot and the title of Tough Nut. The next notification says that Lu Chen needs to clear the Gunnion Peak of monsters and rename it. The protagonist says he'll name the plot Renai Peak and see if it works. The protagonist with a smiling face and a club on his shoulder looks at the notices. They say that Die Hard is a title of bravery and characters with this prefix get an attribute bonus that increases base health by 20%. Lu Chen says that the title is good and also gives a health bonus. He laughs loudly and says that although he is a monster, it is great in its own way, and the game is interesting. Lu Chen heads towards the two tigers, with a recruited werewolf standing next to him. The protagonist yells that they're going to go mop up the monsters and pump up and he's the monster lord from now on. 
Stygian nymphs and werewolves fight the monsters. One of the Stygian nymphs defeats a level 13 moon wolf while one of the werewolves deals with a level 12 golden tiger that is already on the ground. Another Stygian nymph's skull hits a black iron bear, which dies immediately. An item is obtained, mace with spikes white. The protagonist standing with Stygian nymph and the werewolf behind him draws attention to the notice with the white wolfskin greaves and says that there are finally new items, and two of them at once. Lu Chen stands in the middle of the green field and says that he has reached level 12. A blue window appears and says that if the player reaches the appropriate level, the secret realm of level 12 in the single player game. Yu Yu Gorge Level 1 will open. The next box says that there is a division of secret realms in nine heavens, some for single player, some for multiplayer. There are no restrictions on the number of people in a particular secret realm, you can enter at any time. The protagonist enters a cave with stalactites. The protagonist says that this game knows how to surprise when he notices the dungeon. He tells the werewolves to train outside, and not to kill too much and fight altogether, resting when their health is below 40%. Two more notices appear, they say that the secret realm will drop items that match the player's needs and before entering it you must pray. After the prop appears, the first player to discover it will receive a reward five times the normal reward. Lu Chen looks at the huge portal glowing with a bright blue light. On the following notifications, it says that the exit equipment must not be below the quality of the set props. You need to select the appropriate pieces of equipment and the probability of the same items appearing will increase, you can put two props. The protagonist props up his chin and thinks that when he puts down a weapon, the monsters inside will drop weapons, and then thinks that the same thing will happen if he puts down clothes. A light bulb appears above the protagonist and it hits him. He mentally calls himself stupid and thinks about the most cost-effective use of materials. He then thinks about the fact that the output equipment should not be below the quality of the established props, so he will improve the materials to 4 stars. Lu Chen clutches the blue stone in his hand. He says that this is a level 4 material. He adds that if the monsters inside drop level 4 materials 5 times, he will probably make a lot of money. The protagonist's prayer ends and he can enter the heavenly realm. The protagonist stands in the middle of a cave with stalagmites and yells about how huge this place is. The game calls the protagonist's attention to the fact that a server-wide announcement has been published. All players receive notifications in blue boxes that Du Quan has discovered a level 12 secret realm, Yu Yu Gorge, a single-player secret realm level 1 and is awarded the title of Yu Yu Pioneer. The next notice says that the secret realm of UU Gorge is officially open with opening hours from 10.45 to 22.45 and players interested in the treasure hunt should hurry up. There is a huge crowd of players, including a woman with pink hair, a man with golden shoulder pads and a guy with a brown vest. Some of the players are surprised by Du Quan's appearance, while others are amazed that the protagonist is already level 12. One of them reports how they talk about how difficult it is to obtain this title. Another player in the crowd calls the protagonist cool because there was just a server-wide announcement. The protagonist is standing in front of a backdrop of huge cave rocks. Above him, a notice appears that he has received the title of UU's pioneer and a 10% strength bonus. In front of him on the rock are three wolves with green-colored fur. The three wolves are heading towards the protagonist. The wolves have golden helmets and wristbands, and above the head of the closest of them is written their name, Silver Wolf UU. The protagonist says he will get the materials no matter what and swings his club at the nearest wolf. One of the two wolves in the background is startled by the power of the blow. Lu Chen takes a wide swing, hitting one of the werewolves while the other one jumps at the protagonist with its mouth open. Lu Chen yells that luckily these wolves are not very strong and he will deal with five of them without much effort. A blue window appears with information about killing a particularly agile silver wolf Yu Yu for which the hero receives 540 experience points. 5 talent and attribute shards, and 5 mana units. Lu Chen, standing in the middle of the two defeated wolves says that he really got 5 times more and he is now rich. The protagonist sticks his tongue out with a happy expression on his face and gives a series of quick punches, defeating the two wolves at once. Another wolf with glowing green eyes dies from the main character's blow, opening its mouth in pain. As the hour passes, the protagonist swings his club and shouts how cool it is that he leveled up in just an hour. He adds that he has collected 1,000 materials and now his talents have been upgraded to level 4. The protagonist opens his personal profile, which lists the character's stats at the time of the character's 13th level of level 4 talents. The protagonist grasps the club with both hands, his eyes glowing blue. 
he says that his name has the prefix king and he's just like a real boss, and then adds that he doesn't know where to find the ancient fragments and the ancient heart to pump. The protagonist looks deep into the cave and says that now we have to deal with the boss. He adds that he has over 200 damage and over 140 armor and 5000 XP, so he's not afraid. Lu Chen converges on the wolf boss fight and yells that it only has 6000 health and is weak. Then the protagonist adds that he's stronger. A notification appears that the level 15 UU Gorge boss has been killed, for which the protagonist receives 4000 experience points, 15 level 5 talent fragments and 15 level 5 attribute fragments. The protagonist stands over the defeated boss and loudly says that he has 30 evolution and talent fragments and 300,000 reputation. The server players get a notification that UU Gorge has been cleared and it will close in 5 minutes. The crowd discusses what is happening. A man with bulging eyes yells that the secret realm is gone. The guy to his right yells that he doesn't even know when it will activate next time. Someone in the crowd says he's annoyed by this announcement. The protagonist opens the game interface and says that with so many materials, it's better to trade them for reputation and improve the order to recruit a legion to the next level. A notice appears saying that the Legion recruitment order has been upgraded and now you can hire 10 subordinates about the open position of squad leader, which can be used to lead a team of 5 squads single-handedly. Further written about the faction's mission to build their own residence for which you need to cut down 500 trees, 500 units of stone and build their own camp. The reward for the mission will be a large-scale level 3 defensive array called the 4 Quadrant Black Armor Guardian Array. Against a landscape with mountains in the background and trees in the foreground, the protagonist tells the werewolves to stop pumping and that they need to toughen up. Half an hour passes. The protagonist is facing a large crowd of Stygian nymphs and werewolves. He tells them to chop down trees and drag rocks. He adds that they need 500 trees and 500 rocks and tells them to put everything near their camp, then tells them to call him if they complete the task early. The protagonist takes off his helmet in real life and puts it on his feet. He says that he earned 500,000 yuan in less than a week and adds that he seems to be sleeping. Lu Chen raises his right arm up and says that his arm is now healthy and his upper body has also started to recover. He places his other hand on the bicep of his right arm and shouts Lao Lu's name, and then adds that his upper body is now moving and he will be normal very soon. The protagonist looks down and says with a smile on his face that he is starting to feel his hip and may be able to walk again soon but first he decides to buy a house since it costs 500,000 yuan. He can't afford a big house, but he thinks a small one will suffice since it's just for him and Lao Lu anyway. The protagonist looks at the picture of the apartment complex on his smartphone and reads the description that the Eppens Huanchen Eppen, an elegant small apartment complex with a minimum occupancy price of 400,000 yuan, has been officially opened. Then he reads about paying 10,000 yuan in advance and getting a 20,000 yuan loan to buy the apartment. The protagonist says he will give Lao Lu a surprise tomorrow, a high-rise building of China's National Security Agency. A man with red hair is addressing a man in the foreground with a document in his hands. A man with red hair addresses him as Director Lin and asks him about rumors that the agency has set up a special task force to take part in the game. The man with red hair is named Mu Hua and he is the head of the special operations team. The director replies that it is true and the Nine Heavens is not as simple as it seems at first glance. The director named Lin Hai is wearing glasses and slicked back brown hair. He leans his elbows on the table while the man with red hair stands behind him. The director says that the game involves not only them, the government and military from all over the world. He adds that the game could change the future of all mankind. He tells Mu Hua that they will learn some clues if they get to the next stage. Half of Lin Hai's face is covered by a shadow. He asks how Mu Hua is doing. The man with red hair touches his finger to his temple and replies that they are still in the forest of poison mist. Director Lin Hai looks toward Mu Hua and says he will give him a clue. He adds that they need to find Du Quan who can help them get out of there. Director Lin Hai adjusts his tie and says that this player is the only one who has passed this location according to the information from the relevant departments. He tells Mu Hua to befriend this player at any cost. The next day, the real estate department, the protagonist rides inside in a wheelchair. The protagonist is greeted by a girl in a business suit. She offers to help with real estate. And the protagonist replies that he would like to look at a small apartment. A woman in an office suit leads the protagonist further down the corridor, and he is watched by three agents, including Mu Hua. The man with brown hair wonders if he's their target and wonders if he's disabled. The man with gray hair says he is definitely him and some information claims that he can move one arm and his head. Mu Hua adjusts his shirt and tells him to get ready. 
the real estate agent shows the building layouts and says that Lu Chen can be assured of the quality of the property, and they guarantee that there will be no fraud and no losses. She adds that the small apartment he is looking at is the best-selling one and there is only one left. The protagonist smilingly looks at the layout and says that the apartment looks good. The girl looks at the protagonist and says not to hesitate so that someone else doesn't buy the apartment. The protagonist props up his chin and says that he is buying the apartment because he will have plenty of opportunities to make money anyway. A girl in glasses with pink hair and purple bows appears behind the protagonist and the agency worker. She tells the protagonist not to buy the apartment because there are some problems with it. The worker gets worried and asks the girl who she is and what's going on. The girl with glasses turns to the crowd of people around, raises her left hand up and urges them not to buy apartments in the Huanchen apartment complex. The people in the crowd look at the girl, reacting to her words. A fat man exclaims what nonsense is this. A balding man in the background asks if the girl is telling the truth. The woman with the necklace says it's better to believe the girl with glasses, and the woman with yellow eyes exclaims that if it's true, her savings will go to waste. The real estate worker points her finger at the girl with glasses and tells security to get the crazy woman out. The girl with glasses replies that it's all true and she has proof and doesn't want people to fall into the trap and buy these apartments, and then urges them to believe her. Lu Chen has a drop of sweat running down his cheek as he thinks about the fact that after making the payment, it will not be easy to get the money back. He decides not to buy the apartment regardless of whether it is true or false. Three guards arrive, one of them armed with a wooden club. The balding head guard urges him to act immediately, not to aggravate the situation and to buy without hesitation. The brown-haired subordinate to the boss's left tells him not to worry. The guard with brown hair confronts the protagonist and calling the protagonist a cripple tells him to back off and stay out of the way. The protagonist has an anxious face. The main guard with a menacing face puts his hand on the glasses girl's shoulder and tells her to talk outside if she has anything else to say. The girl says to help her as they start dragging her. While the two guards are dragging the girl, in the foreground a guy and a girl are recording a video. The girl with brown hair says it will be interesting, and the guy with purple eyes tells her that the video is not out yet, but the number of views will be huge. The head guard asks the girl what she's talking about and encourages her to go talk to them. The girl with glasses yells to the people in the crowd to stop filming and help. The main character takes the security guard by the arm and asks him how dare he intimidate the girl. The main guard yells at the protagonist saying that the cripple is a real hero and kicks him, but he easily stops the kick with his hand. The protagonist thinks he's so strong. The main guard commands his subordinates to take the protagonist and beat him up. One of the guards runs at the protagonist with a wooden club in his hand. The guard yells that the protagonist can't take care of himself as it is, but Lu Chen immediately elbows him in the head. The protagonist grabs the guard's club and says that not only his strength, but also his reaction speed has been increased. One of the guards loudly asks the protagonist if he is afraid they will tip over his wheelchair. A man with black hair pushes the protagonist's chair. Mu Hua stops the protagonist's wheelchair with his hand and tells him not to worry because they are here. Mu Hua tells the assailants how dare they scare their master and encourages them to attack since he is so brave. Mu Hua and two other agents with glasses are standing near the protagonist. The protagonist asks what's going on. Mu Hua punches one of the guards in the face with his fist while the other agents fight with the other two. Mu Hua and one of the agents stand over the defeated guards. One of the guards says it's a young gentleman and asks why he didn't say anything earlier, and assumes he's playing dumb. Mu Hua calls the protagonist by his nickname from the game and apologizes for scaring him, then asks to be allowed to deal with the rest of the offenders, to which the protagonist responds positively. The protagonist touches his finger to his face while looking at Mu Hua and wonders if he is from the game Nine Heavens. A blonde man comes in with a gold lighter and a cigarette in his mouth. He has two bullies with him. He asks who dares to cause trouble for their construction company. He has a name tag on his suit that says construction company, manager Huan. Mu Hua calls old C.A. Chao on the phone and says something just happened. Mu Hua asks if he knew about this construction company and says that it says Huan Chen Real Estate, Huan's manager. The manager asks if Mu Hua is looking for him and says that no one wanted to cause trouble for their company. Mu Hua with the protagonist beside him says he has less than 10 minutes, pointing his phone at Huan. The girl with glasses is watching in the background. Huan asks if Mu Hua wants to show off more and adds that there is one less minute left. Huan lights a cigarette with his gold lighter and commands his men to chase them away. The man with brown hair to the left of the manager looks at him telling him not to worry and asks him for a minute of his time. 
To the right of the manager the bald man says that a bunch of bullies were trying to deal with them, the champions. A man with brown hair jumps on Muhua swinging his fist and yells at Muhua, and the protagonist that he hates them for being bad guys. A bald man prepares to attack from below. Muhua stands in front of the protagonist defending him. Muhua pushes the brown-haired man away and he immediately falls to the ground. Muhua with anger on his face immediately punches the man in the torso, and the man opens his mouth in pain. Both enemies are defeated, they fly to the floor behind Huan. The manager has a frightened look on his face. Mu Hua walks right up to the manager and looking him straight in the face says he will give him one minute to use other methods. Huan replies that he doesn't have to and admits that he was wrong. Mu Hua interjects from him, wrong. The manager replies that he was absolutely wrong and is ready to compensate for all the damage. He adds that he did a terrible thing and would rather quit. Mu Hua punches the manager in the torso who opens his mouth in pain and spreads his arms wide. All three employees of the real estate agency lie on the ground defeated. Muhua says that apologizing and firing him will not redeem him and he will make anyone who dares to offend the boss regret it for the rest of his life. The protagonist stares at Muhua while he talks to the manager. Someone in the crowd of customers asks where the handicapped man came from and expresses his displeasure that the protagonist is setting his own rules. The balding man replies that he must be from a rich family. The girl with glasses turns around and asks why a guy from a rich family would buy an apartment here. The man with the mustache replies to the girl that she doesn't understand anything and that his family is probably just doing a background check. But now the check is over. Muhua bows in front of the protagonist and getting into character loudly tells his young master that it's been three years and welcome to their family, then tells him to lead them. The protagonist is shocked. He notices that this is the plot of Crooked Mouth Dragon King and assumes they are up to something bad. The protagonist crosses his arms and says with his eyes closed that at first he wanted to be an ordinary and quiet person. But now it seems like a luxury and so he doesn't have too high expectations anymore. Muhu is a bit perplexed and thought about the fact that this guy might be showing off more than him. Three minutes pass. The police arrive. One of the men in uniform announces that this company is suspected of collusion between officials and businessmen in real estate quality problems. Then he adds that they are accused of illegal land grabbing, fraud and violence. One of the uniformed men grabs Hua and then tells him that he and the entire top management of the company are now fired. Muhua watches as Huan cries. One of the uniformed men apologizes to Muhua for letting the criminals go unpunished for so long and asks them to be punished. Muhua says forget it, it's just a couple of stinking fish and nothing more, and then tells him to go back to the station because he has something personal to say to the gentleman. The uniformed man says he won't bother them. Muhua suggests Lu Chen find a suitable place to talk. Lu Chen agrees. The protagonist thinks about he doesn't understand what he is nodding at. He feels that these people are very influential. He stares intently at Muhua. Lu Chen seems as if they want to ask him for something and hopes it won't cause him too much trouble. The girl with glasses crosses her arms over her chest and tells the protagonist that she didn't expect him to be so cool. The protagonist smiles and replies to her that he's beyond grateful and thanks her for opening everyone's eyes. Muhua looks at one of the agents and says that he'll take a break with Mr. and thanks the girl for helping the gentleman. The second floor apartment of the building, the protagonist asks who they are. Muhua replies that they can't say yet, only that they need Du Quan's help and need his help for a fee. Lu Chen and Muhua are holding glasses of green drinks and the protagonist asks why Muhua thinks he can find him. Muhua says that they have their own methods, but the cyber defenses of this game don't have any vulnerabilities like the bank's system. The protagonist drinks from a glass and thinks that it's really not easy to hack into the bank system. Muhua smiles with closed eyes and holding out a gold card says that 500 of their players are stuck at the snake stage, so they need Du Quan's help to get through the forest of poisonous fog. Muhua adds that with this card, the protagonist will be able to choose any villa in the Diamond Manor complex as a reward for his help. The protagonist looks at the map and says that he can't accept such a huge reward for such a small favor. Muhua says that now the first heavenly realm in the game has opened and there are many more to come. The protagonist returns the gold card and says he doesn't like being in debt to people and says he wants to earn what he wants himself. Muhua takes the card in his hand and says that with this card Lu Chen can get a 30% discount on any property owned by Cyan Shen and the developer Diamond Manor. He says to use this card as a reward for work and they will also provide security for his family. Muhua adds whether Lu Chen is okay with this. The protagonist agrees but asks Muhua to answer one question. Lu Chen asks why they put so much effort into the game. Muhua takes a sip and replies that it's not just a game, 
governments and militaries around the world are playing it, but they don't know what's really lurking out there. The protagonist tells Mu Hua to go to the poison mist forest at 7 7 30. He will come and help. Mu Hu with a surprised face claims that the protagonist is Du Quan and asks why the protagonist was silent. The protagonist closes his eyes and says he was waiting for the time to come. He thinks about the 30% discount card, but thinks it's more important to protect the lives of himself and his sister. He adds with a smile on his face that it's really worth the cooperation. It's 7. A lot of players with different equipment have gathered in the forest of poison mist. The player in steel armor asks Mu Hua if they can handle it, because their equipment is too bad. Mu Hu in purple armor and carrying a wooden club replies to the man in steel armor behind him that yes, right now they can't even buy better equipment. The man with a bare torso behind Mu Hua says that a set of equipment from the poison mist forest is too rare and in demand. Mu Hua points his club forward and yells for everyone to stop talking. He commands them to run after him and kill everyone they can. He also adds that Lu Chen didn't explain anything exactly. Mu Hua and the rest of the players stop. They are shocked and ask what is going on. The players see many defeated wolves in front of them. One of them shouts that Du Quan killed everyone. Mu Hu with many players behind him wonders if he single-handedly killed the entire pack. The man in steel armor says that this guy is too strong. The main character with the snake-like lower half of his body says that if it weren't for his team, it would be hard to kill them all. 30 minutes pass. Mu Hua and his team are standing near the defeated boss and says that even the evil and sure boss was killed. He adds that this poison Miss Lex has killed many teams and asks how strong this guy is. Two days go by, Beast Mountain. Lu Chen with blue glowing eyes defeats the wolves one by one. He says loudly that he has obtained 47 spiked maces, 53 wolf skin greaves, and his team has reached level 14. A pink and purple defeated monster of a three-petal flower with a snake-like lower part of color is lying on the ground. A large purple-colored magic ball is next to it. The protagonist draws attention to it and loudly asks what this equipment is. He adds that he has never seen it before. The interface shows that it is a pink skirt of a level 10 three-petaled flower monster. It increases movement speed by 5% and gives a chance to confuse the enemy. Its special skill is confusion, which allows it to disrupt the consciousness of a target whose level is lower than the level of the wearer, allowing the wearer to gain control of the target for 30 seconds. Lu Chen puts on his skirt, surprised to find an unusual item. He notices that it fell out for the first time after two weeks of continuous farming, so the percentage of it falling out is too low. The protagonist puts the skirt up for auction. He wonders how much the skirt is worth and decides to bid it at 1,000 yuan and says he will take it off the auction if it is not bought in 20 minutes. The protagonist sets the price at 1,000 yuan in the auction interface and says he'll sell it for as much as he wants. Lin Jai props her chin up with a happy face. She says that Shan Chen and the others will run to the poison mist forest in about an hour and decides to see if any good equipment is on sale. She notices that Du Quan has something for sale. She sees a three-petal flower monster skirt for 3,500 yuan and is surprised at the unusual equipment and says loudly that it's not in the regular equipment column and is only available to female characters. She adds that the item increases movement speed by 5% and allows you to confuse the enemy, and then says she will try to buy it. Lin Jai puts on a skirt, which she calls beautiful. Lin Jai notices that it has a light floral scent. Lin Jai says that she likes the skirt very much and will definitely buy it. A notice appears where Lin Jai's bid has been raised three times and the price of the item is now 3,800 yuan. Lin Jai notices that there are many people who want the skirt and that it is expensive. The girl with blonde hair hugs her father with glasses and tells him that this is her first unusual equipment and asks him to let her have it. The father corrects his glasses on the bridge of his nose and says he will help her. A guy and a girl wearing game helmets are sitting in the same room. The girl with red hair asks her boyfriend to help her buy a skirt. The guy says he will place a bet. Lin Jai yells that there are five seconds left looking at the auction interface and tells himself to calm down, because the price has reached 65,300 yuan and the last seconds are very important. A report is in progress, 4, 3, 1. Lin Jai is shocked at how many people are bidding. The auction completion notice appears. The player with the nickname Chun Lun Shan Vu bought the item for 98,700 yuan. The protagonist with enthusiasm in his eyes clenches his fists and shouts about earning even more than 80,000, and he almost sold it for 2,000. 
Lu Chen wonders what kind of crazy person bought the gear for that kind of money, and then continues that it's not bad and he has 650,000 yuan along with a 30% off discount card for the house. The protagonist adds that he will soon be able to buy a house for a million. The protagonist with his eyes closed raises his hands at shoulder level and says that he will take the pedigree of a three-petailed flower monster. A notification appears. The talent is a low-level 4 three-petailed flower monster bloodline. The monster is integrated with nature and its field of vision is expanded to 400 meters, immune to low-level mind blur effects. The protagonist has a flower growing out of his head, looking far into the distance. The protagonist looks at distant hills, saying what a wide field of vision he has. A blue magical energy appears in front of the protagonist and his two subordinates. The protagonist says that if it wasn't for the skills of this flower monster, he wouldn't have known there was a hidden area near him. Lu Chen looks at the mist beside him. He says that this fog has a low-level creation fogging effect and cannot be seen without the bloodline of the three-petailed flower monster. It seems to him that there is more to it. The protagonist finds a stone that says Lost Garden of Eden. After the name it says, where monsters roam, the path leads to the wrong way. The Garden of Lost Eden will not pay attention until it expands and the eight formation eyes are destroyed. The protagonist thinks the place is dangerous. All players receive a notification with a black and red background informing them that player Du Quan is entering the Garden of Lost Eden, and the inter-server mission of resisting the invasion begins. The player in the foreground remarks that the place is dangerous. The man in the background asks what the protagonist is doing and what the cross-server mission is. The man in the foreground says Du Quan is good. The man in the background says he has a bad feeling. A black and red notice appears about an inter-server invasion resistance mission, the description of which says that an unknown fog has appeared on the eastern side of the main city and is spreading rapidly. The fog is extremely damaging and can increase the strength of wild monsters and weaken the attack capabilities of humans with their skill effects. It can also corrode equipment so much so that it can't be repaired and slow down the mana regeneration rate. According to the content of the mission, you need to destroy the Baffing Eye of Creation located in the Lost Garden of Eden as soon as possible. Reward, special rewards, the server will get the effect of double experience for 10 hours. A crowd of players are talking amongst themselves, discussing what is happening. A man with a ponytail wonders about a level 20 mission and assumes the protagonist is the same level. The man with short hair in the foreground shouts that it's not. He thinks the mission is so difficult because it's server side. The man with his hair tied back in a ponytail asks if anyone knows where Paradise Lost is. The man in the foreground shouts to the others to hurry up and find it. The notice is black and red. All major level 10 cities will be merged into one zone. All players will be unplugged in 2 minutes. Zone merge will last 15 minutes. Five players in the crowd are discussing what is happening. A girl with black hair shouts that there is no way that 24 cities will merge because there are so many people here. The man in steel armor replies that this must be a very exciting mission since there is a server merge. A man with brown hair loudly tells another player that the rewards will be very cool, and they will be collected in 15 minutes. Lin Jai, along with a purple-haired girl and a red-haired girl, approaches the other two players. Lin Jai asks if they can join them to complete the mission together. The man with the bare torso wearing a shoulder pad agrees because he is worried that their alliance will fail. The man with black hair says that if their alliance Yif join forces with Lin Jai, they will have a chance. The protagonist stands in a fog in front of his two subordinate werewolves. The protagonist realizes that he made a lot of noise with his server-wide announcement and says that thanks to the flower monster's talent, he can see everything perfectly at a distance of 400 meters. He wonders if monsters can see so well after mutating. Seven werewolves emerge from the fog towards the protagonist, their eyes glowing brightly. The protagonist in real life with his helmet on says loudly that there are so many mutated monsters here that he is afraid they will be hard to deal with. The protagonist smiles at the realization that he is a monster who has also mutated and assumes he can handle them. Two mutated elite werewolves appear before him, blue magical energy emanating from him. A mutated Stygian nymph appears, shrouded in destructive purple energy. Lu Chen, enveloped in blue magical energy laughs a little and says loudly that his attributes have doubled. Damage 400 plus armor 130, health 10,000 plus. He adds that in this world, the wild monster has the advantage. 